Movie Strike program starring Van Johnson. Starring Jack Benny. <laughs> starring Van Johnson with Barry Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, Don Wilson. And yours truly, the pickle in the middle. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and a happy mustard to you, too. Uh, say, Don, why is it that every time we have a guest star, you always... Hey, Jackson, don't worry about that now. We're on the air and Mary isn't here yet. Mary? Mary isn't here yet? Gee, that's funny. <laughs> Dennis, what are you laughing at? You said it was funny. <laughs> Dennis, when I said it was funny, I meant it was hard to believe. You understand? Well... Sure you do, kid. When Jackson says something funny, it's hard to believe. <laughs> Phil, stop being on my side, will you? you? Can't understand Mary not being here. She's never been late before. Maybe she overslept. Yeah, over. <laughs> well, I'm not going to wait any longer. I'll call her house. Say, Mabel, what is it, Gay Punk wants now? The Benny's line is flashing. Yeah, I wonder what Saratoga Punk wants now. <laughs> I'll find out. Yes, Mr. Benny. Miss Livingston? Yes, I'll call her home immediately. And he wants I should get him Mary Livingston. <laughs> oh. And say, Mabel, that reminds me. You know me, I hate to spread gossip. But several times lately, I've heard a rumor about Mr. Benny and Miss Livingston. Oh, don't be silly, Gertrude. He's old enough to be her father. <laughs> That's the rumor I heard. <laughs> Oh, Mabel, I can't figure out why Mary should be the light for today's program. They're having Van Johnson. Oh, boy, Van Johnson. Shangri-La with red hair. <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't it be wonderful if he were to step in here this minute and bow low to us and say, Would you two charming and beautiful ladies do me the honor of going dancing with me tonight, babe? <laughs> yeah, but as far as I'm concerned, I'd just as soon go out with men like Jack Benny. Why? Well, when a man like Benny tries to kiss you and you tell him to stop and he stops, you don't feel so disappointed. <laughs> Gosh, I'll never forget the time Jack asked me to come up to his apartment to show me his etchings. And I went, why, Mabel flaps at him. <laughs> Gosh, Gertrude, you can see those etchings. 500 pictures of a man standing in a plantation holding up a big tobacco leaf. <laughs> well, once I went... Operator. Operator, how about my number? I'm ringing it now. Hello? Is Miss Livingston there? What? She left the house two hours ago. She... Oh, for heaven's sake, I should have known. Goodbye. What's wrong, Jackson? What's wrong? Mary's late because she went to pick up Van Johnson in her car. I didn't tell her to do that. What girl's seeing him, I don't know. Well, Jack, you've got to admit that he is handsome. All right, so am I. After all, what's Van Johnson got that I haven't got? Yeah, what's Van Johnson got that Mr. Benny hasn't got? Quiet, Dennis. You, they're not afraid to answer. <laughs> hmm, Van Johnson. You know, Jack, I, I don't want to brag, but I've heard plenty of people comparing me to him. Don, the van they were comparing you with has furniture sticking out of the <laughs> Anyway, I can't understand why all the girls rave so much about Van Johnson. All right, so he's young. Wait another ten years when he gets to be my age. <laughs> He'll see. Would you uh, mind repeating that, Jackson? I said wait another ten years when Van Johnson gets to be my age. Well, I'm trying to figure out some way to answer that and keep it clean. <laughs> well, it can't be done, so forget it. Anyway, Mary and Van Johnson should be here by now. But then this is Sunday. There's probably a lot of traffic. <laughs> Am I driving too fast for you, Van? No, no, Mary. You're doing fine. (laughs) 
Gee, Mary, it sure is a nice drive from Beverly Hills to the studio. Yeah, I knew you'd enjoy the ride, so I took a little roundabout way. I'm glad you did. I've never seen San Diego before. <laughs> Would you like me to roll the window up, Mary? No, thanks. I like the wind. I was afraid it might blow your hair. You have such beautiful hair. Oh, Van, when you say things like that, I just get weak all over. Oh. Mary, look out! Gosh, didn't you see that bus? Yes, but I thought I could fly over it. I mean, fly around it. You better stop, Mary. The light just turned red. Oh, yes. The lights are red. The violets are blue. If we run out of gas, who cares? Woo! I know, I know, Mary, but you'd better stop. You know, when I... Oh, excuse me, but I can't get a cab. Would you give me a lift as far as... Oh, no. It isn't. Oh! A 1946 Buick! <laughs> What a stall. If she'd have gotten in here, I'd have punched her right in the nose. <laughs> Say, Van, how do you happen to be a guest on Jack's program? Well, he made such an attractive offer, I couldn't turn it down. Jack made you an attractive offer? What was it? He said if I gave a good performance, he'd take me to see the outlaw. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but no kidding, Van. How much is he paying you to be his guest? Well, as a matter of fact, I forgot to discuss money with him. Uh-oh. What's the matter? The Screen Actors Guild has a country home just for actors who forgot to discuss money with Jack. <laughs> oh, I don't care about the money anyway. You know, Mary, even if I don't get a cent, it'll be worth it just being on the same program with you. Oh, Van, do you... <laughs> oh, well. I can carry you the rest of the way. <laughs> Here we are, Van, Studio B. Hello, Jack. Here's Van Johnson. Well, well, hello, Van. Hello, Jack. Yeah, I'm glad you finally got here. Mary, I'll talk to you later. I, uh, I hope you appreciate my sending Mary over to pick you up. What? Why, Jack, Fanny, of all... Mary, one more word out of you and the May Company will take that candle out of the window. <laughs> Van, I'd like you to meet our little group of thespians. Uh, this is Don Wilson. Well, he's the fattest little group of thespians I ever saw. <laughs> Pleased to meet you, Don. Well, I'm certainly glad to meet you, Van. I've always admired your work in pictures. Thank you. And this is my orchestra leader, uh, Phil Harris. Hello, Phil. Hiya, bub. What do you hear from the Henna Rents Company? <laughs> So you're Van Johnson, huh? Uh-huh. Tell me, Johnson, what makes all them dames so crazy about you? Oh, I don't know. I guess it's just sort of a psychological phenomena. I'm dead. <laughs> Phil, please. Okay, okay. I'm pleased to meet you, Van. I've always admired your acting. Well, thank you, Phil. And I've always admired your music. Don't get sarcastic. <laughs> Look, Phil, Van was just trying to be nice. He really likes your music. Well, what does he like about it? All right, all right. Forget it. And Van, uh, Van, this is my uh, vocalist, Dennis Day. Glad to know you, Dennis. Should I swoon, Mr. Benny? <laughs> no, no, Dennis, that's for girls. Uh, just say hello. Hello. And now, Van, I want to tell hey, you... Hey, Mr. That... Johnson. Yes, Dennis. My mother thinks you're wonderful in pictures. Well, thank you. She goes to see every picture you make. Well, I'm flattered. And now, Van, I want when to... When you smile, she breaks out in big red blotches. <laughs> Dennis. When she saw you in Thrill of a Romance, she came home and burned her wedding dress. That's enough, Van. That's enough. And now, Van, My I want... father got so mad, he broke all the stays in her girdle. <laughs> yeah, girdle. Now, Van, as I started... It's awful. You might break up our home. Oh, for heaven's sake. Look, Dennis, it's time for your song. Now, go ahead. What a business. My home's being broken up, and I have to sing. Yes, yes. Now, go ahead. Come over here, Van. I want to tell you about the sketch we're going to do. I hope Marvin likes it. That was, as I can't begin to tell you, sung by Dennis Day. It's a wonderful song, Dennis, and you sang it beautifully. Yeah, and I can't understand it. My home's being broken up. It'll work out, kid. That really is a lovely song, and you did it beautifully. And now, and now, ladies and gentlemen, oh, Van, Van, are you ready? You bet, Jack. Good. And now, ladies and gentlemen, in honor of our guest star, Van Johnson, who was recently seen in Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer's picture, Weekend at the Waldorf, for our feature attraction tonight, 
We will present our version of that same picture entitled, A Fortnit at the Acme Plaza. <laughs> Curtain music. The Ashley Plaza Hotel. Outwardly calm, but within, a seething turmoil of emotion. Where mystery meets intrigue. Where intrigue meets romance. Where romance meets drama. Where drama meets grandpa. <laughs> yes, folks. The Ashley Plaza. Hello, Acme Plaza, where the riff meets the raft. Sorry, Mr. Raft, Mr. Riff is out. <laughs> Acme Plaza, a good place to lose a weekend. There's a bottle in every chandelier. <laughs> One moment, I'll connect you. Hiya, cutie. Making any good connections lately? Well, well, if it isn't Sherlock Harris, the house detective. How does it feel to be a gumshoe? Now, hold it, baby. I may be a detective, but I ain't no gumshoe. You're not? No, not since I got this magnifying glass. I'm stepping over that stuff. (laughs) Oh, say, uh, Sherlock, what's the latest dope on that character in room 417? You know, the one who's suspected of killing 23 wives. Well, I'm working on that. As soon as we find the bodies, we'll be able to pin it on him. Uh, Find the bodies? Where do you think he's hiding them? I don't know, but that rug in his room is getting awful lumpy. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, folks, the Acme Plaza where mystery meets suspense, where suspense meets romance, where gravel Gertie meets B.O. Plenty. Hello, Gertie. The Ashley Plaza. Yes, babe, when Sherlock Harris is on a case, he always finds out what's going on and gets uh, his excuse man. Excuse me, uh, uh, room 310 is calling. That's the big business tycoon, the one that owns all the railroads. Oh, yeah. I understand he's kind of sweet on you. Hello? Hello, baby. You know who this is? Yes, you're that great, big, important business tycoon. That's me, the one and only Martindale Schnook. <laughs> uh, what can I do for you, Schnooky? I want to know if you'll go out with me tonight. Well... I'll give you anything your little heart desires. I'm rich. I own railroads. Lots of railroads. The New York Central, Santa Fe, Baltimore, Ohio, the Southern Pacific, Union Pacific. I know, I know. You own all the railroads in the country. All except one. And they won't sell me that. I've got to have it! I've got to have it! Which railroad is that? The one that goes Bromacelsa, 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 Bromacelsa. <laughs> I'm crazy three ways. Well, Snooky, keep trying. I will. Goodbye. Gosh, the one and only Martindale Snook in love with me. I wonder. Operator, if... would you please get me room 212? My name is Van Johnson. Uh, one moment, please. I'm sorry, but 212 doesn't. What are you staring at? You. Gosh, but you're beautiful. What? You're wonderful. The minute I saw, I first saw you, I knew you were the one for me. Look, would you please go out with me tonight? No, no, no. Go away. You're not my type. You're not... Give me that again, will you? <laughs> would you please go out with me tonight? No, no. Go away. You're not my... Yep, that's what it says here. <laughs> Yes, folks, the Acme Plaza, where boy meets girl, where girl meets boy, where I once had a routine, but it was cut out at rehearsal. (laughs) The Acme Plaza. (laughs) Look, honey, I'm lonesome, and you're you're so beautiful. Lonesome? Didn't you ever have a girl? Only once, but I gave her up. Her eyes were like two limpid pools. Two limpid pools? And why did you give her up? Her nose looked like a diving board. Oh, oh, please forgive me. Please say that you'll go out with me. Well, I don't know. There's a big railroad man in this hotel who's in love with me. A railroad man? Well, don't you think it's time for a switch? Ah! <laughs> oh, Johnson, you've got a million freckles and a joke under every one of them. <laughs> what? Oh, forgive me. Well, I'm excited. I, I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> but I do know that I, I want to marry you. Say that you'll be mine. I'm sorry, but I'll have to think it over. Think it over, think it over. That's what they all say. What's wrong with me? Why can't I get a girl? Why can't I... Uh, Pardon me, operator. Uh, Would you please ring Miss Lana Turner's room? Lana Turner? Yes, sir. Uh, Take it on phone number three, please. Thank you. Hello, Lana? This is Van Jackson. (laughs) 
Yes, yes, I know my voice sounds like honey dripping into your ear, but you always have to keep telling me that. What? No, I'm sorry, I can't take you out tonight. I know I promised you this afternoon, but I can't make it. Oh, now, Lana, don't feel that way. What? Lana, put down that gun. You will get over it. <laughs> I don't care if it is a water pistol. You'll drown yourself. <laughs> well, all right, call me next week. And stop sending me orchids. My room is full of them. Goodbye. Thank you, operator. <laughs> Imagine turning down a date with Lana Turner. Who is he? Uh, that's Van Jackson, the glamour boy. Gosh, I wish I could be like that. Well, you can't accomplish it overnight. He's been working on it for over 50 years. <laughs> well, do you think it might help me if I went over and talked to him? Well, sure. What have you got to lose? Uh, I beg your pardon, Mr. Jackson. Do you mind if I ask a favor of you? Why, no, no, no. Go right ahead. Well, I was standing over there by the switchboard, and I heard you talking to Lana Turner. Oh, good, good. I thought maybe I wasn't talking loud enough. <laughs> Uh, what's, uh, what's on your mind, son? Uh, I'm in love with that telephone operator, and I just can't get anywhere. I don't know what's the matter with me, but girls just don't seem to like me. They don't? No. Well, I can understand that, kid. Look at your face. You have too many freckles. Too many? Yes. Now, my complexion is perfectly clear. And look at your eyes. They have no expression. They haven't? No. Now, if you'll notice, my eyes sparkle. Yes, they do. And look at your hair. My hair? Yes. Now, take mine. Thanks. Put that back! <laughs> Turn it around, I look silly and bang. <laughs> now, listen, kid. The trouble with you is that you probably haven't got the right approach. You're too timid. If you want to take that telephone operator out tonight, you can't walk over and say, May I have a date? You got to go over there and say, Listen, babe, you're going out with me tonight, see? We're going to the Macombo, and you're going to pay the... No, not the first time. <laughs> now, go ahead, walk over there and do as I tell you. I'll be right behind you. Gee, thanks, Mr. Jackson. Now, listen, babe. Huh? I've been strolling around here long enough. You're going out with me tonight, and that settles it. What? I said you're going out with me tonight, and we're going to the Macombo. Gee, the Macombo. Then can we go to the other places, too? Other places? You say you're not satisfied? You say you want more? Tell you what I'm going to do. Yes, folks, everything happens at the Acme Plaza. You say you're not satisfied? You say you didn't like our play? You say you want more entertainment? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the song, I'm Gonna Fall in Love with You, was written by Johnny Green and Ralph Blaine and sung for the first time by Mary and Van Johnson. Van Johnson appeared here tonight through the courtesy of MGM, producers of A.J. Cronin's The Green Years. Say, Van. Yeah, Jack? I meant to ask you, this picture, The Green Years, how, how come that you're, you're not in that one? Well, the leading man called for a man old enough to be my father. Oh. Say, Jack, now that I think about it... Oh, go have... count your freckles. <laughs> Good night. The Lucky Strike Program, starring Jack Benny, with Barry Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, to those of you who haven't been warned, at the close of his radio season, Jack Benny is contemplating a concert tour. So let's go out to Jack's house, where we find him taking his violin lessons. No, 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 Monsieur Benny. 
You better try the exercises once more. All right, Professor LeBlanc. Alone, commence. One and two and three and four and... Do not make it too legato. Grip your bow and play staccato. Softly like a burby chirping. You sound like a horse that's burping. <laughs> that's enough, Monsieur Benny. Now, try intermezzo again. Yes, sir. No, 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 Monsieur Benny. Huh? Please, a violin is a delicate instrument. It has a heart. It has a soul. You have already broken its heart. Have pity on its soul. I see. You see, you see, you see. Please, Professor, control yourself. Would you like a glass of water? Yes. Put a little cyanide in it. <laughs> Not till we finish the lesson. All right, all right. Take the exercises once more. Yes, sir. Play it softly, play it tender. Where can I go to surrender? <laughs> Make the notes a smoother mixture. This is worse than your last picture. <laughs> My poor head is getting woozy, onesy, twosy. I hate you, G. <laughs> all, all right, Mr. Benny, all right. Now try intermezzo once more. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm sorry, Professor. Mr. Benny, the violin has only four strings. Your left hand has only five fingers. How can just the nine of you make so many mistakes? <laughs> I'll try it again. Please, and this time, just follow these simple instructions. Relax, be calm, and slide the bow delicately over the strings. Is that all? <laughs> That's all. Now, commence. One, two... <laughs> You see, it sounds better already. <laughs> They're fixing the three. I'll try it again. No, no, no. Let's call it today. The lesson she has done. Touch that, Professor. Look at the clock. The lesson still has 14 seconds to go. 14 seconds. That's right. And then you will give me back my pants. <laughs> yes, sir. Very well. Commence. The man clock, the hour, she is up. The man is here, finished. I am liberated, free, free. Hello, the man, they love her, free. Professor, control yourself. Control yourself. <laughs> Stop kissing me. <laughs> My goodness, these Frenchmen are so emotional. Oh, forgive me, Monsieur Benny. I forgot myself. Well, Professor, the lesson is over. You may go now. But, Monsieur, you've forgotten something. You, you haven't paid me. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, by the way, Professor, would you like some lunch? No, I want the money this time. <laughs> well, I'll have to get it for you. Excuse me a minute, will you please? Come in. Oh, hello, Don. Hello, Jack. <laughs> Come on in. Here's a bag. Don, what are you giggling about? Oh, nothing, nothing. <laughs> nothing. You didn't come over here. Don, what have you got behind your back? Mary Phil and Dennis. <laughs> hello, Jack. Hiya, Jackson. Hello, Mr. Benny. Oh, for heaven's sake. I know Don is big, but how the three of you can hide behind him is beyond me. I but... beg your pardon, but would you mind waiting on me first? What? I saw this line, so I got in it. Look, miss. I'll have size nine, one pound, or where it won't show. Size nine, one pound, or where it won't show? Yeah. Nowadays, when you see a line, it's either for nylons, butter, or vaccination. Oh, yeah, yeah, but this happens to be a private residence. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, by the way, as long as you're here, would you like some lunch? No, thank you. <clears throat> Didn't even give me a chance to show her the menu. Jack, Benny, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Mary, what's wrong with serving lunch? Imagine putting stools around your swimming pool and calling it the Seaside Cafe. So what? Uh, I serve good sandwiches and draft beer. That's right, Libby. Pickle in the middle and the beer on tap. <laughs> oh, 
Bill Harris, that gag alone ought to get you a summer show. <laughs> That kind of stuff won't keep in the summer. <laughs> you kiss and laugh you want to, but I have the best beer in town. Oh, Mr. Benny. Yes, Dennis? I'm going to deliver your keg of beer tomorrow. You are? Why? My mother sprained her back. <laughs> oh, that's a shame. How did it happen? Well, yesterday, when my mother was at work, my father waxed the floor in the kitchen. It was sure slick. Oh, you mean when your mother stepped in, her feet went out from under? I think so. We got our footprints on the ceiling. <laughs> Well, that's too bad. Did your father tape up her back? No, her mouth. You should have heard what she was calling him. <laughs> well, I don't blame her. Anyway, kids, what's going on? How come you all dropped in together? Well, we're going to the beach, Jack, and we thought you'd like to go with us. The beach? No, no, I don't think so. Oh, Jack, stop being afraid. What happened to you last year won't happen again. What happened, Livy? <laughs> well, Jack was lying on the sand, and two men came over and tried to bury him. Yeah. Tried to bury him? So what? They were only kidding. Not when they were playing organ music at the same time. <laughs> Yeah, imagine those two undertakers coming down there looking for business. Well, it was your own fault for lying on the beach in a tuxedo. <laughs> no, that wasn't a tuxedo. That was my old bathing suit, and the lapels were a little shiny. <laughs> anyway, kids, you're on the beach. i got to stay home and practice my violin. Hey, Jackson, you're not serious about that concert tour next summer, are you? I certainly am, and no swing stuff for me. I'm going to play the classic. You know, that long-haired stuff. Long-haired stuff? Yeah. Wait a minute. You ain't got the talent or the toupee for it. I'll get along. Don't worry. Now, look, kids, I'm kind of busy today, so if you go to the beach, go ahead. Okay, Jackson. Come on, kids. Let's go. Say, Jack, is our program all set for Sunday? All except Dennis' song. Just run over it once, will you, kid? Yes, sir. Monsieur Benny, Monsieur Benny, I am waiting. Oh, Professor LeBlanc, I forgot all about you. You want your money. I owe you for six lessons, don't I? No, five lessons. I thought it was six. No, no, five. I am not charging you for the time I hit you on the head with the violin. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, that's right. Well, I'll get you the money as soon as I hear this song. Go ahead, Dennis. Let's have it. Professor, put your pants on. Please, Dennis. <laughs> there we go. Very good, Dennis. Very good. That'll be swell on the show. Can we go to the beach now, Mr. Benny? Yes, yes. Go ahead, all of you. So long, kids. So long. Go so on, Jackson. See you. Say, Don, why don't you and Phil go in your car, and Dennis and I will follow you. Okay. Oh, Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wilson. Huh? Oh, Professor LeBlanc, uh, you're not going to the beach with us, are you? No, no, no. But before you leave, will you please go back in the house and remind Monsieur Benny to pay me for his violin lessons? Oh, well, it's probably just slipped his mind. I'll go in and speak to him. You, uh, you just wait here. Thank you. Oh, uh, Professor, you better go in the house and speak to Mr. Benny yourself. I have to leave now. Goodbye. Goodbye. All I can do is try again. <laughs> Well, Professor LeBlanc, come on in. Gosh, how time flies. Seems only yesterday that I took my lesson. Eh? It was today and I want my money. Oh, yes, yes, your money. I forgot all about it. How much was it again? For five lessons, seven fifty. But if you give it to me now, I'll take six dollars. No, 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 no. I'm going to settle it for the full amount. You are very kind. Now, let's see. I owe you seven fifty. Is that right? Oui, monsieur. Now... France owes us four billion six hundred and six million dollars. But I did not borrow that personally. This is not an international affair. Did I charge you for the Louisiana purchase? <laughs> what? All I want is to be paid for the violin lessons. You know. Da, 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 I know, I know, I know. Uh, just, uh... Uh, just sit here, Professor. I'll, I'll go get the money. Good. I'll uh, I'll be back in a minute. Now put your pants on. <laughs> yeah, Professor's a nice fellow. A little excitable, but he's... Hey, excited. boss! Oh, what is it, Rochester? Are you staying in for dinner? Yes, yes, I think I'll eat uh, by the pool. You can't do that, boss! Why not? The elves are having a party out there tonight! <laughs> No, oh, then I'd better have a bite now. What have we got in the icebox? Well, we got some cold boys, cheese blintzes, sour cream, bagels, and matzo balls. Boars, bagels, and matzo balls? Yeah, we had them left over from St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> Good, but make up a big batch of hot biscuits with lots of butter. Well, we're all out of butter, boys. We are. We'll go over next door to the Ronald Coleman's and borrow some. But, boss, every time we're short of something, you send me to the Coleman's. Oh, we haven't borrowed so many things from the Coleman's. We haven't. When the time comes to return them, it'll be easier to switch houses. 
Rochester, stop wasting time. Now, run next door and get some butter. Okay. Uh, I'll be in my room practicing my violin. I have to practice all afternoon for my concert. So call me when lunch is ready. Yes, sir. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me, Mr. Rochester. Well, Professor LeBlanc. Yes, Rochester. Will you please do me a favor? Sure, sure. What is it? Will you please tell Mr. Benny I am waiting for my money? How long have you been waiting? Since 12 o'clock. You're a beginner. I've been waiting since 1937. <laughs> anyway, you better speak to it yourself. I got to go next door and borrow a pound of butter. And, Professor. Yes. The lesson's over. Why don't you put your pants on? <laughs> Oh, Benita, Benita. Yes, Ronnie. Uh, who was that you were talking to at the back door? It was Mr. Benny's butler, Manchester. Oh. <laughs> oh, well, what did Benny want this time? No, no, don't tell me. Let me guess. Was it the garden hose, the cup of sugar, or my tuxedo? <laughs> it wasn't your tuxedo. Mm, good. The last time he brought it back, the pockets were full of sand. <laughs> this time he wanted to borrow a pound of butter. Butter? Butter? Well, what does he think this is? Shangri-La? <laughs> All the man ever does. Borrow, borrow, borrow. Oh, darling, don't be unfair. Once in a while he's loaned us things. Remember last week he let you have his lawnmower? Yes, but it wasn't much use to me. I could only mow half of our lawn. Only half? Yes, that's as far as the chain would reach. (laughs) (laughs) Don't sound so jumpy, darling. (laughs) He means well. Oh, I know. I really don't mind Benny too much. But sometimes he wants to borrow the oddest things. Last week he asked for some sympathy soothing. Sympathy soothing, sir? Yes, you, you know, Benita, the sympathy is spelled backwards is your tapamis. Oh, yes. You did your tapamis, you did your tapamis. You did your tapamis, your blues are well. Benny's a pleasant enough chap. With all his following, I sometimes wish we weren't next door neighbors. Yes, it is annoying, but living next door to him has its compensations. Compensations? What do you mean? Well, he does serve the biggest glass of beer in town for a nickel. <laughs> I know, but that big electric sign flickering on and off, it keeps me awake at night. Yes. Yes, and what a corny sign. Benny's Seaside Cafe. Come in and drool by the pool. <laughs> <laughs> right, right under it, it says, put your stomach in our hands. Oh, my, my goodness, look what time it is. And I haven't started to work on that scene from If I Were King. You know, I'm doing it next week for that benefit performance. Well, I won't disturb you, darling. You stay here in the library and rehearse, and I'll go into the other room. All right. Now, let's see. Yes, I better start with this introductory poem. <clears throat> if I Were King... Ah, love, if I were king, what tributary nations would I bring to stoop before your scepter and to swear allegiance to your lips and eyes and hair? Beneath your feet, what treasures I would fling. The stars should be your pearls upon a string, the world a ruby for your finger ring. And you should have the sun and moon to wear if I were king. Ah, let these wild dreams and wilder words take wings. Deep in the... Deep in the... Deep in... Oh, Benita! Benita! Yes, Ronnie! Would you please put the cat out? Ronnie, <laughs> I let her out about an hour ago. Well, then, for heaven's sake, let her in! <laughs> She's in some kind of trouble. <laughs> now, let's see. Oh, yes, yes. 
Ah, let these wild dreams and wilder words take wing. Deep in the woods, I hear a shepherd sing. Oh, Ronnie, I looked out the front door in the back, and I couldn't hear the cat anywhere. Well, come in here, and you will. <laughs> now, do you hear that? Oh, Ronnie, that is Mr. Benny playing his violin next door. Oh, well, I should have known. <laughs> Our cat hasn't sounded like that since she had a strep throat. <laughs> Isn't it awful, Benita? You know, I must rehearse. Well, darling, just go ahead, and if he starts again, don't pay any attention to him. Well, I'll try. I'll try. Yes, I'd better look over the love scene. Let's see. Here it is. Catherine is seated in the royal drawing room. I enter left, walk up stage, take her hand and speak. Darling, I love you. Love you because you are the loveliest woman alive. All my life I have read tales of love and tried to find their secret in the bright eyes about me. Tried and failed. But when I saw you, the old heaven and the old earth seemed to shrivel away. And I knew what love might mean. For your love, I would face torture. For your love, I would defy death. For your love, I'd reach the gallows. For your love, I'd reach my gallows. No, no, no! What am I doing, Benita? I've got to have this stop. Call the police. Call the fire department. Call Petrillo. <laughs> I know, I know, but you'll start again. And with that same old da 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 I tell you, if this doesn't stop, I... Ronnie, the telephone. Oh. <laughs> yes, yes, I'll answer. Hello? Oh, hello, Ronnie. Uh, this is Jack. Jack Benny. Oh, it is, eh? <laughs> yes. And, Ronnie, I'm trying to practice my violin lesson. So if you and Benita must argue, would you do it on the other side of the house? <laughs> You. It's nothing to be ashamed of. I mean, it happens in the best of families. <laughs> oh, Jack. Jack, you've got the wrong impression. Benita and I weren't arguing at all. Now, Ronnie, Ronnie, you don't you have to stand on ceremony with me. Even Rochester and I have our little tips. But we always pack it up, and I'm sure you will, too. I mean, it's not hard if you'll just make... Hmm. How do you like that? He hung up on me. Imagine him being that mad at Benita. <laughs> Oh, well, there's a job to be done, and I'm going to do it. Hello, Luella? <laughs> Have I got a scoop for you? This time, it's the Coleman. Uh-huh. Like cats and dogs. No, I don't know how it started, but he feels awful. He cried to me over the phone. That's right. You're welcome, Luella. What? No, no, don't mention my name. I don't want anybody else to know I'm a heel. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> been quiet for five minutes now. I'm sure Mr. Benny's finished practicing. So go on rehearsing. Yeah, all right, darling. Uh, let me see. Where was I? Uh, well, there's the door. I'll get it. Yes? Excuse me, Mr. Coleman. But you're a good friend of Mr. Benny, are you not? Well... Would you please do me a favor? A favor? Yes. Mr. Benny owes me seven dollars and fifty cents. Would you mind speaking to him about it? You mean to say that Mr. Benny owes you $7.50 and won't pay you? That's right. Well, I'll take care of it right away. Goodbye. Well, how do you like that, Benita? Benny owes him seven fifty and won't pay it. 
Hey, give me that phone. Hello, Luella. <laughs> Have I got something for you? Good night, folks. Saratoga, anchored in San Francisco Bay, the Lucky Strike Program, starring Jack Benny, with Barry Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we're all gathered aboard that valiant aircraft carrier, the USS Saratoga. In a few days, the Saratoga will be on its way to Bikini Atoll to participate in the history-making atomic bomb test. Tonight, it is our privilege to broadcast from aboard this great ship. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the Saratoga, which is affectionately called Old Sarah, we bring you another old lady, and here she is, Jack Benny. Hello. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, I must say that on an occasion like this, you could have gotten a better introduction and one with more dignity. Well, what do you mean, Jack? Well, for instance, since this is a fighting ship, you could have said we bring you Jack Benny, that old fighter. Or, since this ship is manned by salty sailors, we bring you that old salt. Do you understand? Well, yes, Jack, I'll try it again. Ladies and gentlemen, since we're broadcasting from under the crow's nest, we bring you that old... Never mind! <laughs> I was happier being an old lady. Anyway, Don, I want to tell you something, and I mean this seriously. I've been broadcasting for 15 years and have done programs from all over the world. But today, broadcasting from the Saratoga is the most thrilling experience I've ever had. Well, Jack, what about those broadcasts you did from New Caledonia and from Paris, France, and Cairo, Egypt? I'll admit they were exciting, Don, but here on the Saratoga, just before it leaves for the atom bomb test, just think of it. And now that I think of it, let's finish our program, eat those steaks, and get off of here as soon as possible. <laughs> I mean, don't even wait for laughs, Don. Let's get off. <laughs> Now, Jack, don't tell me you're afraid why this ship isn't leaving until next week. And that's what they say, Don, but uh, who knows when an admiral may decide to go fishing. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, don't worry about me. Let's do a good show tonight because the sailors here have been in San Francisco quite a while and they're lonesome. Well, I don't know why they should be lonesome. I don't know why they should be lonesome at all. There are a lot of pretty girls in San Francisco. I know, Don, but the way this town is built, you know, with these steep hills, it's so hard to get a date. Well, what do you mean? Well, last night I followed a girl down California Street. Just as I got to her, she stepped aside and I fell in the bay. <laughs> so I, uh, I spent the rest of the evening with a mackerel. <laughs> Believe me, I didn't... Pardon me, Mr. Benny. Huh? Oh, what is it, Taylor? I hate to interrupt the program, but Captain Ring told me to give you this note. It's urgent. Well, let me have it. Hmm. Hmm. My, this is serious. Oh, Don. Yes, Jack? Would you mind stepping a little more to the center? The ship is listing to port. <laughs> Thank you, Don. Does that straighten out the ship, sailor? I'll find out. Is that all right, Lieutenant? I'll find out. Is that all right, Commander? <laughs> I'll find out. Is that all right, Admiral? I'll find out. Is that all right, Ensign? <laughs> ensign? Only... Admiral, do you have to ask an ensign? Only today. His mom is listening in. Oh, oh, I see, I see. Well, look, sailor. Yes, sir? I'll try and keep Wilson in the middle of the ship, and if things aren't right, let me know. Yes, sir. Gosh, Jack, I, I can't believe that I could cause the ship to list. I'm not that big. You're not, eh, Don? You look like Knob Hill in slacks. <laughs> so just stay in the center of the ship. And Hello, we're... Jack. Hiya, fellas. How do you like being aboard the USS Saratoga? Gee, it's thrilling, Jack. And this morning, Commander Entler showed me all around the ship. Gosh, it was interesting. You know, there are a thousand men in the crew. Only a thousand? What do you mean, only? A thousand is a lot of men. 
To row a big ship like this? <laughs> row? Jack, it so happens that... No, I'm not going to tell you. Tell me what? No, I can't tell you. It's a military secret. Oh, come on, Mary, tell me. Well, Jack, since you were in the Navy, they got rid of the galley slaves. <laughs> oh, God. Well, I won't tell anybody. Say, Mary, Jack, I... Jack, I'm sliding away from you. Don, get back in the center of the ship. <laughs> there, that's better. Say, Mary, on your little tour... Mary, on your little tour around the ship, did you learn any other interesting things? Yes, Jack. I saw Captain Ring climbing way up the superstructure. Then I saw him crawling behind the gun turret. And then I saw him slipping into one of the lifeboats. Really? I'll bet he was placing delicate instruments for the test. No, he was hiding Easter eggs for the boys. <laughs> now, isn't that nice? Captain must have a hard job every Easter coloring those powdered eggs, you know? <laughs> It isn't every captain that would... Hey, Mr. Benny, did you hear about the... Oh, hello, Dennis. Hello. Hey, Mr. Benny, did you hear about How do you the... feel, kid? Fine. Hey, Mr. Benny, did you hear you about the... You look great, you know. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, Mr. Benny, did you hear about the... Hear about what? <laughs> hear about what, Dennis? I better not tell you. It's a naughty joke. <laughs> Well, Dennis, people shouldn't tell you those kind of jokes. I made it up myself. Oh. And now, fellas... It's about a traveling Boy Scout. Never mind. I don't want to hear it. Anyway, we haven't time for that now. You know, Dennis, we're all here aboard the Saratoga because in a few days it'll leave for the atomic bomb test. Oh, boy! Mr. Benny, what's an atomic bomb? I'm glad you asked me that, kid. You see, an atomic bomb is a very special kind of bomb. It's a bomb that's atomic. Now, you see, you see, atomic energy is composed of three different things. Neutrons, protons... And nylon. And nylon. <laughs> Thanks, Mary. Now, the scientists had no trouble getting the protons and neutrons, but only officers could get the nylon. <laughs> you see... You see, Dennis? Oh, Jack, what are you telling the kid all that stuff for? Leave him alone, Miss Livingston. He fascinates me. Thanks, yes. Now, the big problem that faced us scientists was to split the atom. First, we had to use some uranium, which is better known as U-235. It was marked down from U-250, you see? That's Fred Allen walking up there. Then we put this... Then we put this... He's making a lot of noise on this ship, you see? Then we put this into a cyclotron. Mix it with neutrons. And add a pinch of salt. And add a pinch... Mary. <laughs> you use your recipe and I'll use mine. Anyway, Dennis, you mix the neutrons with the U-235 and then you treat all the elements with radar. Put them all together again and you have the atomic bomb. Gee, and my mother says you're a dope. <laughs> oh, she does, eh? My father thinks you're a dope, too. Oh, yeah? But I don't think you are. Well, thanks, kid. But they think I'm a dope. <laughs> Dennis, that's enough. Now, Dennis, let's have a song. After all, you were in the Navy. These are your buddies, and they're all anxious to hear you. Okay. You know, Mr. Benny, last year when I was in the Navy, I sang on this ship. I know you did, kid. It must be nice being back here again. By the way, uh, would you like to say something to the boys before you sing? I sure would. Go ahead. Hey, fellas, do you want to hear the story about the traveling Boy Scout? <laughs> Dennis. A Boy Scout went into the woods and built a fire. Then a week later, he went back, and the fire was still burning. Still burning? Don't you get it? Get what? He spent the afternoon in the woods with his old flame. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake. Traveling Boy Scout. Go ahead and sing. Oh, Mr. Benny. Yes? You've got your fat announcer off center again. Don, keep your seam on the beam. <laughs> Go ahead, Dennis. Let's have your song. Come on. That was... That was I Remember April, sung by Dennis Day and accompanied by Phil Harris... And it makes you wish you were on the Enterprise Orchestra. <laughs> and now, fellas... Wait a minute, Jackson. Wait a minute. I heard that. Oh, hello, Phil. How are you, Jim? <laughs> Listen, Jack.
Jackson, there's a time and place for everything, and I wish you'd have a little more respect for my musicians, especially in front of all these guys. What? My boys done their bit. In fact, more than half of them were overseas. No kidding, Phil. Where were they? Alcatraz. <laughs> Alcatraz. Phil, are you crazy? Alcatraz is a prison. Then how come my boys all got discharge buttons? Let me see those buttons. Well, now, isn't that cute? A little file. <laughs> how nice. Anyway, Phil, I don't care where they came from. You've got a great band. I'm only kidding when I pan them. I'll say they're great. You know what, Jackson? I'm always tickled to death when I get back to San Francisco. I had my band here the first time at the St. Francis Hotel 20 years ago. No kidding. That's right. And Frankie, my guitar player, is the only boy that's still with me. Well, what do you know? Say, Phil, how come Frankie's been with you all these years? Jackson, if I had on you what he's got on me, I'd be the star of this show. <laughs> I can believe. But listen, Phil, you won't be the star of this or any other show until you learn to come to rehearsal on time. What happened last night? It wasn't my fault, Jackson. It was so foggy I got lost. Oh, don't exaggerate, Phil. The fog doesn't get that thick. It doesn't, eh? During the war, they used to launch the victory ship from the top of the mark. Now, now, now you're being silly. No, she ain't, Jackson. That's where I always go to get launched. <laughs> Hit me on top of the head with a bottle of champagne. I'm sailing today. <laughs> Phil, can't you stay in dry dock for just one night? <laughs> Stop using the fog as an alibi. But, Jack, Phil's right. Between the fog and the hills in this, this is some town. Well, what are you talking about? Well, last night, some silly jerk followed me down California Street, and when I stepped aside, he fell in the bay. <laughs> What are you laughing at, Livy? Two hours later, I saw him at the Bell Tavern dancing with a mackerel. That was my girl. <laughs> to stop calling her a mackerel just because her eyes are on the side of her head. <laughs> and now, fellas... Every time a dance lasted more than three minutes, he had to throw her back in the water. Mary, cut that out. And now, fellas... Oh, Mr. Benny, the water's coming through the porthole. <laughs> Well, tell the Admiral to get the ship in the center of Don. It's easier that way. <laughs> anyway, Don, watch it. We don't want anything to happen to the ship before she goes out for the test. Say, Jack, uh, when are they going to unload the Saratoga? You know, take all the equipment off. Mary, they're not taking anything off. This ship is going to the test fully equipped. From the airplanes on the flight deck down to the dishes in the galley. Oh, Phil, how about a band number? You all set? Yeah, say, Jackson, before I forget it, you want to go to the ball game with me tonight? No, thanks, Phil. I went over to Oakland and saw the game Friday night with Mary. Benny, here's a telegram that just came for you. Telegram? Thank you, sailor. Well, listen to this, kids. Congratulations on your first anniversary as an honorary admiral in the Nebraska Navy. Signed, Governor Griswold. Gee, I almost forgot about that. I remember it, Jack. You got the commission from the governor of Nebraska. Yeah, Jackson, I remember it, too. It was a year ago this week. Yes, sir. And boy, were you a ham. What are you talking about? You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> remember how you... Mary, it's over now, so let's forget it. Hey, pardon me, Mr. Benny, but this sounds interesting. If it's anything about Navy, the boys would like to hear it. Oh, it was <laughs> nothing, sailor, nothing. Nothing? Come here, sailor. I'll tell you all about it. Mary, he doesn't have to sit on your lap. You use your recipe and I'll use mine. <laughs> Hmm. Here's what happened, fellas. You'll love this. Dolphin. <laughs> it was a year ago this week, and I happened to call Jack's house to tell him that butter was getting short and he should stop using it on his hair. So I... Hello, Mr. Benny's residence, star of stage, screen, and radio, and we'll be the center pole at May parties for 10 cents a turn. Hello, Roger. <laughs> Uh, Rochester, I'd like to speak to Mr. Benny, please. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Livingston. I wouldn't want to disturb the Admiral now. Admiral? Haven't you heard? Mr. Benny is now an Admiral in the Nebraska Navy. In the Nebraska... Oh, I get it. He's been made an Admiral in an imaginary Navy. Yeah, but he's taking it seriously. He made me sew gold stripes on his blue serge suit. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake. Rochester, how many stripes did he make you sew on? I don't know, but you could cut the sleeves off at the elbow and he'd still be a full admiral. <laughs> you mean he really thinks it's on the level? Yeah, when the milkman came this morning, uh, uh, Mr. Benny looked at him and said, What are you doing in summer uniform? <laughs> what did the milkman do? He turned to his horse and said, Stop laughing, he hasn't paid last month's bill yet. <laughs> 
Well, Rochester, tell Mr. Benny I call and then I'll see him later. Yes, ma'am. Goodbye. Goodbye. Doggone ever since the Braska made Mr. Benny an admiral, he's been upstairs working out fleet maneuvers. I better get him away from that bathtub before he messes up the whole room. Oh, Mr. Benny. Say, boss. Oh, Admiral. What? Oh, oh, it's you, Rochester. Uh, glad to have you aboard. What do you want? Your breakfast is getting cold down on the lower deck. Oh, uh, uh what have we got for breakfast? The whites of two eggs. What happened to the yolks? Don't you remember? You scrambled them and stuck them on your cap. <laughs> leave now. I'm about to engage the enemy. Now watch. The enemy fleet is over here. Boss, don't splash the water on the bath, man. Quiet. Now I swing my carriers around like this and bring my destroyers over to this side and insert them. There you are, Rochester. Now if you were the enemy and I had you surrounded like that, what would you do? I'd pull out the plug and ground every ship you got. <laughs> Rochester, that was brilliant. Starting tomorrow, you're an ensign. Thank you, sir. Now, uh... Now go to the wireless room and send this message to Admiral Nimitz. Dear Chester, bathtub maneuver successful. Sighted soap sank sane. Signed, John Paul Benny. Aye, aye, sir. <laughs> And that, fellas, is exactly what happened a year ago this week. All right, Mary, you glad now you told him? Oh, Jackson, you're not mad, are you? Of course not. Approve it. I want all of you to come up to my hotel room for a fish dinner tonight. What are we going to have? Mackerel. When I catch them, feed them, and dance with them, I'm not throwing them back. <laughs> Pray, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we want to thank Captain, Captain S.C. Ring, Commander D.M. Entler, Lieutenant W.B. McCarthy of the 12th Naval District, and all of the officers and men aboard the Saratoga for inviting us up here today for this special broadcast. It was a great privilege. Good night, everybody. This is NBC, the National Broadcasting Company. The Lucky Strike Program, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, last night, Jack, Mary, Phil, and Dennis went to a neighborhood theater to see a special showing of Danny Kaye's new picture, The Kid from Brooklyn. So let's go back and pick them up as they leave the theater. <laughs> oh, gee, that was a wonderful picture, wasn't it, fellas? Yeah, that Danny Kaye's a panic. He's really clever. You said it, Phil. <laughs> he had that audience in stitches. If you ask me, that guy's one of the funniest comedians in show business. Hmm. <laughs> What's the matter with you? Nothing, nothing. I can't figure you out, Jackson. Every time another comedian gets laughs, it burns you up. I'm not burned up. Well, the least you could do is say you liked it. I liked it. I liked it. We came to see the picture. We saw it. Now, let's forget it. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake, Jack. Every time you see somebody else in the movies, you get mad. I do not. You do, too. He even got mad at that 74-year-old man who married a 16-year-old girl, and he was only in the newsreel. <laughs> well, he didn't have to look so smug. <laughs> now, let's forget it. Oh, come on, Jackson. Snap out of it. Phil, there's nothing to snap out of, believe me. If Danny Kaye's picture was good, I'd be the first one to say so. As a matter of fact, just last week, Mary and I went to the movies, and when we came out, I raved about it. That was your own picture. <laughs> oh. And you were mad halfway through that until you put on your glasses and found out it was you. <laughs> Never mind. Dennis, Dennis, did you think Danny Kay was funny? I don't know. I could hardly hear him with all those peanuts cracking, cracking, cracking. <laughs> Who was eating peanuts? I was. <laughs> well, you didn't miss anything, Dennis. What a title for a picture. The kid from Brooklyn. Look, Jackson, I remember last year when you and I went to see Danny's other picture, Wonder Man. You didn't like that either. Wonder Man, of course I didn't like it. The plot was ridiculous. Imagine expecting people to believe that a man can die and a ghost can come back and talk to his twin brother. Jack, if you're going to pick stories apart, what about the picture you made called The Meanest Man in the World? Well, at least in that picture, I didn't die. You did the night I saw it, Bob. <laughs> Don't 
don't change the subject. We're talking about Danny Kay. Hmm, those specialty numbers on his radio program. Oh, brother. What do you mean, oh, brother? I like the way he sings. A git got diddle and a git got sand. A dit-dot diddle and a dit-dot sand. Some talent. A git got diddle and a git got sand. A dit-dot diddle and a dit-dot sand. On my program, I've got two guys that do that and sell tobacco at the same time. <laughs> And he thinks, he thinks he's got something new. Wonder Man, what a plot. Imagine a ghost coming in. Hey, Jackson, look out for that taxi. Why don't you watch where you're going? You taxi drivers think you own the whole street. I got a good mind to... Jack, Jack, calm down for heaven's sake. Don't pick a fight with a taxi driver. Well, all right. Okay, driver, get going, get going. Yes, sir. (laughs) They watch where they're driving. Well... I'm going to leave you here, Jackson. Me too. All right, I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, by the way, Jackson, did you hear what Hedda Hopper said about me on her radio program last Monday night? Yes, Phil, I heard it. Yeah, she said I had charm, talent, personality. She said Alice had charm, talent, and personality. Community property, father. Community (laughs) property. (laughs) Phil, go home, will you? Okay. So long, Jackson. So long. I'll walk as far as the next corner with you, Mr. Benny. All right, kid, come on. You know, Dennis, I hate to be critical of other people's pictures, but I was certainly disappointed in Danny Kay's. Well, the people in the audience were sure laughing. I know, but you can't always go by. Dennis, stop jumping over the fire plot. <laughs> you can't always go by an audience reaction. Now, Danny Kay had nerve enough to make another picture after Wonder Man. What a fantastic plot that was. Imagine a ghost coming back to this world. Well, you were a ghost, and you came back, and the horn blows at midnight. Well, at midnight, it's possible. (laughs) When did you see my picture, kid? I saw it about five years ago. Five years ago? I only made it two years ago. I didn't even like it then. (laughs) What are you talking about? In the first place, Dennis. Dennis, stop jumping over fire plugs. (laughs) You act just like a kid. Why don't you grow up? Look at Shirley Temple. Look at Freddie Bartholomew. (laughs) Now, come on. Walk like a man. Well, here's where I have to leave you, Mr. Benny. See you tomorrow at rehearsal. Oh, you you forgot your line. Okay, well, good night. Good night. Good night. Ooh. <laughs> That's funny. Dennis made it. I guess this is a bigger hydrant. Can I help you up, Mr. Milan? I'm not Mr. Milan. <laughs> I can get up myself. Hey, Jack, Jack. Huh? It's me, Jack, Danny Kay. Oh, Danny. Danny. <laughs> Gosh, Danny, this is a coincidence running into you. I, I just saw that special showing of your new picture. Oh, you did, Jack? How'd you like it? Danny, I thought it was the greatest thing I ever saw in my life. <laughs> I don't, you were you were sensational at it. I was? Daddy, believe me, I haven't enjoyed anything that much in years. <laughs> My side still hurt from laughing. That's funny. What's funny? Well, uh, I just ran into Dennis Day and he said you thought it was lousy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dennis Day. Where'd you see him? I caught him in midair over a fire plug. <laughs> And Dennis told you that I said it was lousy? Yeah. <laughs> Certainly it's amazing what kids will, uh, will, uh... Repeat. Repeat. I mean, make up. <laughs> Look, Danny, what he probably heard me say was that even though I thought this picture, the kid from Brooklyn, was terrific, it still wasn't quite as sensational as your last picture, Wonder Man. He told me you thought Wonder Man stung, too. <laughs> Well, tell me, Danny, have you made any other pictures? 
Yes, up in arms, and that's your last chance. <laughs> well, look, Danny, you know Dennis is a silly kid and doesn't know what he's talking about. Now, Mary and Phil were with me, and if you want to know what I thought... I about... ran into them, too. <laughs> well, Danny, they were only kidding. Your new picture is a riot. See, I thought it was funnier than Random Harvest. <laughs> Wait a minute, Jack. Random Harvest wasn't funny. That's what I mean, Danny. In fact, you have so much talent that hey, I... Bud, Bud. Huh? Can you just tell me what a First National Bank is? The First National Bank? Yeah. Uh, you go down to the next corner, and it's one block over. Thanks, Bud. You're welcome. I wonder what he wants at a bank this time of night. I don't know. Hmm? He must be a doctor with that black satchel. Yeah, yeah. I thought I recognized him, but I... I thought I recognized him, but I couldn't tell with that mask over his face. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, what were we talking about, Jack? Me or you? Let's see. Oh, yes. Now, Danny, don't let this go to your head, but you've got so much talent that you and I ought to team up and make a picture together. Why, you and I can have comedy all sold up. You and I, you and I can be the biggest thing in pictures. I can see our names in light right now. I and you. <laughs> Not important now. <laughs> the main thing, the main thing is that Kay and Benny, Kay and Benny would be the greatest team in show business. Uh, what about Crosby and Hope? Those golfers? <laughs> I mean, what would they be without Dorothy Lamour? You know, say, come to think of it, Jack, you're right. They started to make a picture without her, but Crosby looked so bad in a sarong. No kidding, <laughs> really? Damn, Pam, I'll warn them, too. If they try that trick again, their next picture would be the road to Warner Brothers. <laughs> I know what you mean. I made that trip myself. <laughs> In fact, Paramount made the San Fernando Valley my home. <laughs> they didn't even, you know, they don't even give you a bus ticket. But anyway, Danny... Hmm. I wonder what that explosion was. It's the First National Bank. How do you know? The night watchman just flew by. <laughs> Oh, yes. Anyway, Danny, if you and I could... Hey, own... Bud, Bud. Huh? Where's the second national bank? <laughs> Go straight down to the next corner and then three blocks to your left. Thanks. He must be a stranger in town, isn't he? Anyway, Danny, as I said before, I'm convinced and you and I ought to make a picture together. Oh, I think you're right, Jack. And you know what? I've got a wonderful song that'll fit right into it. It's called Concerto for Tongue and Orchestra. Concerto for Tongue and Orchestra? Yeah. Yeah, would you like to hear it? Right out here on the street? Sure, that's why I carry this phonograph. I never know when somebody's going to ask me to sing. <laughs> oh, oh, well, yes, go ahead, Danny. Let's have it. Okay. <laughs> Danny, Danny, that was swell. I'm sure it'll be a big hit for you. Yeah, well, thanks, Jack. Look, I've got to run along now. I'll see you later. Huh? Okay, so long, Danny. So long. Oh, Jack, before I leave... Since you just saw my new picture as a matter of professional courtesy, I, I think it's only fair that you shouldn't have to pay. So I, I'd like to return the price you paid for admission. Oh, no. No, Danny. I wouldn't think of it. Oh, but, Jack, I insist. No, no. There's no use talking, Danny. I don't want to... I went to see your picture. Nobody forced me. And it was well worth the money, which, including the tax, came to 65 cents. <laughs> Oh, 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 I'm sorry. I let it slip. <laughs> well, that's, I'm glad you did, Jack. And here's your money, 65 cents. Thanks. And, Danny, I know that you saw... I know that you saw my last picture, so I'm going to return the price you paid for admission. Oh, you don't have to do that, Jack. The manager already did. <laughs> then we're even. Well, so long, Danny. So long, Jack. Oh, Danny, there's only one thing. When we make a picture together, let's not do a fantasy like Wonder Man. Why? What was wrong with Wonder Man? Well, now that we're partners, I can talk frankly. Wonder Man was so unbelievable, a ghost coming back and talking to his twin brother. You can't get away with stuff like that. Oh, I don't know. I believe in ghosts. You do? Sure. But, Danny, a ghost can't actually come back to Earth and walk around and talk almost like a human being. What about Fred Allen? <laughs> a ghost? Danny. A ghost looks that bad? <laughs> well, thanks, kid. Now we're really partners. So long, Danny. So long, Jack. So long. No, 
Oh, darn it. The door's locked. I forgot my key. Rochester, open the door. Coming, boss. I'll have to hang up now, honey. Goodbye, honey. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Goodbye. Rochester, open the door. Sorry, boss. I was busy on the phone. I heard you. Who are you talking to? The milkman. <laughs> the milkman. Rochester, do you expect me to believe you were blowing kisses to the milkman? Why do you think we've been getting butter lately? <laughs> Say, boss, how was Danny Kaye's picture? Oh, it was all right. Much better than his other one. You know that Wonder Man? Hmm. What a picture, Wonder Man. Who believes in ghosts? Who believes in which? Ghosts. You don't believe in ghosts, do you? Not exactly, but when I shake hands with somebody and say, give me a little skin, I want to feel it. <laughs> Rochester, that's not what I'm talking about. You're not afraid of ghosts, are you? I'm afraid of anything that's overdrawn at the blood bank. Oh, well, that's being childish. Maybe so, uh, boss, but uh, that's one of my idiosyncrasies. Well, if you don't need me anymore, I think I'll go to bed. Go ahead, Rochester. I'm going to the library to relax for a while. Is the phonograph in there? Uh, yes, boss. Okay, good night. Good night. Hello, Polly. Hello, hello, hello. I think I'll read for a while before I go to bed. Let's see... What books have I got here? Here's one. I Stand Condemned. <laughs> oh, I read that a few weeks ago. About the man who went to the electric chair and he had three lovely children. Apple, Pan, and Dowdy. <laughs> Let's see, what else is there? Here's one. Old Ghost Tales. Silly. Oh, ghost tale. Now, let's see what it says. Note. For those who do not believe in ghosts, this book is respectfully dedicated in the hope that the authenticated evidence contained within these pages will dispel all doubts on the subject. On the subject, on the subject. Quiet, Polly. As the... As the last dying gasp leaves the body, the spirit is released into the cosmic atmosphere. This ectoplasm, when returning to its terrestrial habitat, often takes the form of an apparition clothed in white... Ah! Rochester! I'm just changing the bed sheet. <laughs> well, you, don't, you don't have to wear it over your head. Now, go to bed. Okay. Good night, boss. Good night. Hmm. It was in 1887, on the night of January 4, in the old McPherson mansion, when the secret of the returning squire first came to... Oh, I don't know why I'm reading this anyway. There's no such thing as a ghost. <laughs> I wouldn't be too sure of that, Benny. Well, I know what a... What? Who am I talking to? Who are you? I'm you. Me? Yeah. I'm your ghost. The ghost of Jack Benny. But, but I'm not dead yet. <laughs> That's all right. I can wait. <laughs> you can... Oh, what's the matter with me? First thing I know, I'll be talking to myself. Serves me right for even reading them. But then, let's see. I wonder if there is anything to this story. The McPherson mansion had been vacant for 15 years when suddenly one night a light appeared in the attic. That was the beginning of... <laughs> Who's that? Hello, Jackson. Who... Who are you? <laughs> I'm the ghost of Diamond Jim Brady. Diamond Jim Brady? Yes, Jackson. I made something out of life. I ate well and drank well. I was surrounded by beautiful women. Nightclubs and cabarets threw open their doors to me because I always picked up every check in the house. <laughs> I had fun. Is that fun? <laughs> You don't understand that, do you, Jackson? 
Well, let me tell you something, Jim Brady. If you didn't stuff yourself with that rich food, you might be alive today like I am. I'd rather be a ghost like I am. <laughs> Get wise to yourself, Jackson. Money is made to spend, so spend it. <laughs> spend, spend, spend. <laughs> I should have him in my audience. <laughs> maybe... Maybe he's right. Maybe I ought to... Oh, no, I don't want to start inflation. <laughs> but then... Oh, what's the matter with me? I don't believe in ghosts anyway. This is all in my mind. Imagine a ghost... I think I'll go upstairs. Wait a minute. That sounds like music in the distance. Violin music. That's all right, Mr. Betty. That's a what she is. Beautiful violin music. What? Who are you? I am the ghost of Antonio Stradivarius. <laughs> Stradivarius, the greatest violin maker that ever lived. Yes, Mr. Benny. All of my life I work, I live, I die just to make that violin a beautiful instrument. For 90 years I put my heart and a soul in it. And in a five minutes, you break. <laughs> but Antonio... Mr. Benny, I beg you. I plead with you. Give up with the violin. But Tony... Please, in the name of a Paganini, in the name of every musician, I beg you, don't play the violin. I am so tired of turning over into my grave. <laughs> Look out. Look out, Mr. Stradivarius. You can't go through that door. It's locked. Hmm. He went through it anyway. <laughs> Gee, I know I'm not a Fritz Kreisler or a Heifetz, but I'm not a Spike Jones either. <laughs> well, this serves me right for going to see Danny Kaye's picture. <laughs> <laughs> What? Who are you? <laughs> I'm the ghost of Danny Kaye's twin brother. You saw me in Wonder Man. But, but what are you doing on Earth? Goldwyn picked up my option. <laughs> <laughs> but even so, why did you leave heaven? Some guy kept blowing a horn at midnight and drove me nuts. <laughs> oh, this must be a trick. I still don't believe you're the ghost of Danny Kaye's twin brother. Oh, you don't, eh? Do you want me to prove it? Yes. Stop it. 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 Stop what are they afraid of? I'm going to finish this book. The McPherson mansion had been vacant for 15 years when suddenly one night a light appeared in the attic. Then a terrible scream rang out and they knew that old McPherson had turned to a bed to the trail. Now, thanks very much, Danny, but I got to rush now and I'll see you later. All right, Jack. But I have to run over to another studio. You know, Luella Parsons just begged me to be on her program tonight. Sometimes I wish I weren't so irres irresistible. <laughs> Good night, everyone. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Barry Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Tomorrow, the Jack Benny Show leaves for a three-week trip to Chicago and New York. So let's go out to Jack's home in Beverly Hills, where Rochester is helping him pack. Uh, be careful how you fold it over the hanger, Rochester. Yes, boss. Careful now, I don't want any creases in it. Okay, okay. Now pack the other one. I don't want to be caught short on the trip, so I'll take all four of them. Why did you include the blonde one you're wearing? <laughs> oh, yeah. Now I think we ought to start packing your clothes. 
Okay, I'll take this one, and this one, and this one. Uh, no, no, this one. Uh-oh, be careful, boss. You almost sneaked in a suit where the coat and pants match. <laughs> well, don't let me do that, Rochester. I don't want to give Hollywood a bad name. <laughs> Come on, help me with the, uh, help me with the rest of my things. All right, here you are, boss. Peekaboo! Rochester, just pack that underwear and stop playing games. <laughs> now hurry. Hurry, 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 hurry. Quiet, Polly. Now let's see. You pack my aspirin, vitamin, blood tonic, nerve tonic, sleeping pills, liver pill, Listerine, Benzedrine, Tablum, <laughs> toothpaste. Sympathy soothing syrup. Oh, yeah, sympathy soothing syrup. Did you put in the 10 cent size or the 25 cent size? The 10 cent size, a gallon ought to be enough. <laughs> now, let's see if I have everything for the trip socks, shoes, shorts, shirts, ties, hat, top coat, sandwiches, soda pop, and cash register. <laughs> now, what else? Oh, yes, I think I'll take a good book to read. Uh, how about this one over here? Hmm. I Stand Condemned. <laughs> oh, I read that. It's a wonderful story. It's about a man who goes to the electric chair and leaves three lovely children, Sam, Lewis, and Abispo. <laughs> I'll take it alone and uh, read it again. Now, help me shut up these valises. Shut up, shut up. <laughs> Quiet, Polly. Don't say such naughty things. That's a foo-foo word. <laughs> Polly, are you going to miss Daddy? When he goes on the Dwayne Big trip to the Dwayne Big City with all the Dwayne Big skyscrapers. Boss, do you think you'll see Fred Allen? That's a foo foo word, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know. Now let's, uh. I'll get it, boss. Hello, Jack Benny's residence. Star, stage, screen, and radio, and we'll drive you to work until the trolley strike is over. <laughs> Yes, ma'am, this is... Yes, ma'am, he's almost packed. All right, I'll tell him. Goodbye. Boss, it was Miss Livingston. She said she'll be a little late picking you up. She's having some trouble with her packing. Oh, I bet it's that new maid she hired. <laughs> Gee, Miss Livingston, I envy you going to Chicago and New York. Yeah, they're really exciting places, Hilda. Now, let's see. I'll take this pair and this pair and this pair. Is Chicago really as windy as they say? Yes, and I'm glad you reminded me. I better take a couple of pairs of the lacy ones. <laughs> uh, now, look, Hilda. Tell the gardener I'll be away for four weeks. Tell the butcher I'll take care of the bill when I come home. And you know what to tell the milkman. Yeah, that fresh guy. <laughs> What? You know, the last time you were away, Miss Livingston, when I went to the door, the milkman threw his arms around me and kissed me, and I shook all over. <laughs> you mean you were thrilled? No, he had a cold bottle on my back. <laughs> oh, now let's see. I want to take along this lovely pair of nylon stockings that Mr. Benny gave me. Oh, they're beautiful. Mr. Benny bought them for you? No, he won them on the Queen for a Day program. <laughs> Miss Livingston, you certainly are lucky. Yes, they weren't his size. <laughs> uh, now, let's see. Uh, I ought to take something to read on the train. Why don't you take this book, Miss Livingston? It's the latest selection of the Book of the Month Club. Oh, yes. I Stand Condemned. I read the reviews last week. It's about a man who goes to the electric chair and leaves three lovely children. Sander, Mendel, and Journey. <laughs> Gosh, that sounds like an exciting story. Yes. <laughs> Say, Miss Livingston, could I go down to the station with you? You see, Alice Faye is one of my favorite movie stars, and she'll probably be there to say goodbye to Mr. Harris, and I'll get a chance to see her. Oh, I'm sorry, honey, but Alice uh, probably won't be there. She's working at the studio today. Gee, I wonder how Phil's coming along with his packing with no one to help him. <laughs> Now, be careful and don't trip over the suitcase, honey. I won't, Daddy. I'm going to miss you when you're away. Well, thanks, baby. I'm going to miss you, too. Daddy, have you got another little girl in New York? Nope. Have you got a big girl there? Of course not. Never talk that way around your mother. <laughs> now, let's 
see. Uh... Oh, yes, baby, hand me that over there. This long, thin stick? That's right. And careful now, you don't break it. What is this stick, Daddy? It's a baton. What's a baton? I don't know. It's got something to do with music. <laughs> I keep waving it, and the guys in the band keep looking at it, and since Petrilla don't object, I guess it's okay. <laughs> Well, let me see. I guess that's all. Oh, Daddy, here's something Mommy told me to give you. It's a farewell present. For me? Gee. Well. Gosh, this is swell. Just what I've always wanted, a book. Uh, oh, what's the name of it, honey? I Stand Condemned. Oh, yeah, yeah. I heard about that. It's all about a man who goes to the electric chair and leaves three lovely children, win, place, and show. <laughs> Now, uh, let's see here. Uh, I want to... Daddy, uh, why did Mommy mark that arrow on the cover of the book? The arrow? That's in case I pretend to read. I'll know which end to hold up. <laughs> well, I guess we've got everything. I better leave now, honey. So come on and give Daddy a great big kiss. But, Daddy, you promised you'd do something for me before you left. Now, honey, Daddy's late. But, Daddy, you promised. Okay. Ham, hocks, and turnip greens, you and me in New Orleans, and that's what I like about the South. Yeah. Oh, Daddy, you're wonderful. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Goodbye, baby. <laughs> No, Dennis, I absolutely forbid you to take it. You're too young. But, Mother, there's nothing wrong with it. Then why was this book banned in Boston? I stand condemned. Hmm. <laughs> but there's nothing wrong with the book. It's all about a man who goes to the electric chair and leaves three lovely children. Bro, Mo, and Seltzer. <laughs> Seltzer was just a little squirt. discussion. Now finish your packing. Yes, Mother. And, Dennis, be careful on the trip. Don't stick your head out of the window when the train is moving. Remember what happened to Cousin Wilbur when he went to New York last year? Yes, Mother. And if the train stops long enough in Kansas City, put some flowers on Wilbur's grave. <laughs> All right. It's getting late. I better finish dressing. Please hand me my tie and shirt. Uh, just a second, son. I'd better pin this $20 bill on you before you put on your shirt. Hold still. There. Now, Mr. Benny will never find it. <laughs> Dennis. Dennis, what did you just put in your suitcase? Oh, that's my new contract for next year. Oh, I'm sorry you signed up again with Mr. Benny. But why, Mother? After all, Mr. Benny is a big celebrity. And Mr. Benny's a big radio comedian. And Mr. Benny's a big movie star. What's that stamp on the bottom of the contract? He's a notary public, too. <laughs> Dennis, are you sure you rehearsed the song you're going to do in Chicago? Oh, yes, Mother. I know it by heart now. Would you like to hear it? Oh, I'd love to, Dennis. I'll accompany you. You'll accompany me? Certainly, Dennis. Before I married your father, I was the one-man band at Major Bo Saskatchewan unit. <laughs> a one, a two, a hit it! Gosh, darling, I, I better hurry. Look what time it is. Yes. Are you all packed, dear? Oh, yes, darling. But uh, what are you so sad about? Oh, just think. In one short half hour, I'll be saying goodbye to my dear, sweet, big, sad husband. Now, now, don't cry, sweetheart. I, I'm only going to be gone a few weeks. Hello? Uh, hello, Don. Are you all packed? Oh, yes, Jack. Be at the station now. Goodbye. Well, my grips are all packed. How are you going to be gone? About four weeks. Then you ought to take some. <laughs> yes, I think so. I wonder how much I should take. I'll be gone exactly 28 days. That's 28 breakfasts and 28 lunches. What about your dinners, boss? Oh, I'll probably be master of ceremonies at a lot of banquets. <laughs> you know. Oh, yes, we wrote those letters, didn't we? Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I better go down to the vault and get some money. Hi, 
How are you feeling, Ann? Oh, fine, now that spring is here. It is spring, isn't it? Yes, yes, yes. It's, it's very lovely out. By the way, Mr. Benny, I've been trying to recall something. Do you remember when you first brought me out here? Yes. Yeah. What was the name of that little dusty trail that led up to your house? Dusty trail? Mm. Oh, oh, that's Wiltshire Boulevard. Now. <laughs> I said I'm going to New York. Where? New Amsterdam. Oh, oh. <laughs> Yes. You might not believe this, Mr. Benny, but I had a chance to buy that place for $24. Oh, well, it's, it's worth a lot more now, you know. Inflation, I guess. Yes, yes. Well, I better open the safe now. Shall I go down to the lower level? No, no, Ed, no, I trust you. Now, let's see. Uh, the combination is right to 45, left to 160. Back to 15. Then left to 110. There. I wish Boulder Dam would step up the current. <laughs> now, let's see. There. I guess that'll be enough money. Well, Ed, I've got to rush down to the railroad station now. Goodbye, Mr. Benny. Goodbye, Ed. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. Down here? <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, I forgot. So long, Ed. Here you are, folks. Union Station. Uh, you go ahead, Mary. I'll catch up with you. Okay. Uh, how much is a driver? A uh, dollar sixty-five. Here you are. A dollar sixty-five and a dollar for you. Gee, thanks. Well, here I am. Gee, that was fast, Jack. Did you pay the driver? Yes, Mary. Here's your purse. <laughs> You, you left it on the seat. Oh, for a minute I thought you used my money. Don't be ridiculous. Come on, let's go inside. And, oh, by the way, Mary, you ought to get that zipper on your purse fixed. It's stuck. Hmm? It isn't stuck. I had it welded after our last trip. Oh, well, now you'll have to have it sold, too. There's a hole in the bottom. Why, Jack, Benny, you mean Come to tell on, me... we haven't got time now. It's <laughs> a big fuss over everything. Uh -huh. Now, let's see. I wonder where the gang is here. Gang meeting on track five for Anaheim, Azusa, and Tuscamanga. Oh, there they are, Jack. Oh, yes. Yeah, attention, attention, please. People stopping at Albuquerque, please have your tickets validated. People stopping at Chicago, please check your baggage all the way through. People stopping at Kansas City, please put flowers on Wilbur's train. <laughs> Uh, Phil! Phil! Don! Over here, Jackson. Is everybody here? Where's Dennis? He's not here yet. Well, I hope he isn't late. Hey, Phil, why are you lugging that big bag around? Why don't you check it? Oh, no, no. Not this one, Jackson. I got my music in it. <laughs> music. Sounds like the concerto from Lost Weekend. <laughs> Phil, you ought to be ashamed. Now, wait a minute. We're going to be on the train for four days. Four days with nothing to do. You kids can read. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. I forgot about that. Huh? Attention, all passengers going to Anaheim, Azusa, and Cucamonga. Those going to Anaheim and Cucamonga will take the local. Those going to Azusa will board the super chief, walk back to the last car, and get off. You are there. <laughs> have a couple of magazines. Magazines? Sure, Mary. Wait here. I'll go over to the newsstand and get some. Oh, um... Oh, mister. Mister. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like...
to get some magazines to read on the train. Uh, what have you got? We've got Flick, Pick, Pete, Look, Hook, Snook, Judge, Smudge, Fudge, and the Saturday Evening Post. <laughs> Well, I think I'll just take this one, Esquire. Uh, that'll be 75 cents. 75 cents for Esquire, but everybody else only charges 50 cents. We throw in the scissors and thumbtacks. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I'll take, uh, I'll take something else. I've got a good book you might enjoy reading. It's called I Stand Condemned. No, no, I've already... It's about a man who goes to the electric chair and leaves three lovely children. You should live so and long. <laughs> I read that. Anyway, I'll take these magazines here. Thank you. Here you are, Mary. Uh, what'd you get? Uh, click, pick, peek, look, hook, snook, judge, smudge, fudge, and pravda. <laughs> That's all. Say, Jack, Jack, here comes Dennis. Oh, yes. Hello, oh, you're a little late. Hi. Oh, hello, hello, Dennis. Hello. My mother came down to see me off. Oh, hello, Mrs. Day. Hello. Hello, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Billy. Once my boy gets on that train, it is your responsibility. I know, I know. And when you get to New York, I want you to take better care of Dennis than you did last time. Don't be taking him to that place called Minsky's. <laughs> Minsky's? Why, Jack Benny, did you take Dennis to a burlesque show? Mary Minsky's happens to be the name of a delicatessen. Isn't that right, Dennis? Yes, sir. See? Oh, Mr. Benny. Yeah? Remember that third salami from the end? <laughs> I feel like I'm leaving from a jukebox. Jack, Jack, hurry up. Right with you. Hello, 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 everybody. Got here just in time. Jack, there's your publicity man, Steve Bradley. Oh, yes. Goodbye, Steve. Oh, no, you don't. I came down here to get some pictures. Now, come on, line up, everybody. Benny, you stand right here. But, Steve, we... Now, take those roses and hold them up there in front of you. Roses? What are they for? You're going to put them on Wilbur's grave. I didn't even know Wilbur. That's all right. Just give him the flowers. You don't have to talk to him. Now, look. Look, Steve. Now, hold it, hold it, hold it now. Smile, come on. Smile, everybody. There. Steve, the train is moving. That's fine. One more of you, Benny, lying in front of the engine. Now, cut that off. Come on, Dennis. Goodbye, Mrs. Day. Goodbye. Have a nice trip. Goodbye, Mrs. Day. Goodbye. Have a lovely time. Goodbye, Mrs. Day. I'll take good care of Dennis, and when we get to New York... Ah, shut up! <laughs> Oh, Benita, I can hardly believe it. But, Ronnie, it's true. You said get on the train. Yes, Ben is really gone. And we'll have four glorious weeks of peace and quiet. Benita! Ronnie! Ronnie, put me down. I didn't think it'd affect you this much. Well, Mary, next Sunday we'll be broadcasting from Chicago and the following two weeks from New York. Jack, when we get to Chicago, are you going to visit Waukegan? Yes, I have to, Mary. They beg me to come. I don't know why I'm so irresistible. There, I got it right. Now let Alan make something out of that. Good night, folks. <laughs> House in Chicago, Illinois, the Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, Rochester, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Chicago, which is just a stone's throw from Waukegan, we bring you something that was thrown back, and here he is, Jack Benny. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, I'm very proud of this turnout here in Chicago. 
Why, this auditorium is packed. Do you know that there are 3,724 people sitting in the audience? 3,724 people? How do you know? I counted them as they came through the door. <laughs> I forgot the tickets were free. <laughs> But well, that's all right. I'll get them at the soda fountain. Yeah. <laughs> Leave it to me. Well, Jack, since we're broadcasting so close to Waukegan, I presume your father is in the audience. Yes, yes, he is, Don. He just got back from a trip to Florida, Havana, and Bermuda. Oh, I thought your father spent most of his time at home. And he used to, Don, but since he, uh, since he won the I Can't Stand Jack Benny contest, he's traveling. <laughs> He's been all over, you know. Now, wait a minute, Jack. I thought, according to the rules, your relatives weren't allowed to enter the I Can't Stand Jack Benny competition. Don, when he heard about the contest, he disowned me. <laughs> so it was perfectly legal. Well, Jack, I'll bet you didn't get many contest letters from the people in Chicago. They seem to like you here. They certainly do, Don. Did you see that reception I got at the station? Why, they tore the shirt right off of me. Of course, I don't blame them. After all, it isn't very often they get to see two movie stars at the same time. Two movie stars? Yeah, I have a picture of Charles Boyer tattooed on my chest. <laughs> you have? Oh, I don't believe it. Open your shirt. All right. There. Well, sure enough, Charles Boyer. Jack, what's the idea? It's a little trick I use for close-ups, you see. When I raise my arms, he smiles. <laughs> You'll be surprised how this tattoo of Boyer on my chest has helped me... To... Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Hello, everybody. Gee, Mary, you're certainly looking cute today. I haven't seen you since we got off the train. How about a great big kiss? Okay, open your shirt. <laughs> <laughs> He's for close-up, for heaven's sake. Mary, you mean Jack showed you that picture of Boyer on his chest? Oh, he shows it to everybody. Jack's got the only shirt that works like a Venetian blind. <laughs> Venetian blind, Venetian... Mary, you're just jealous because of the big reception I got when I arrived in Chicago. Big reception? Yes, when the train pulled in there, there were thousands of people at the station. Mayor Kelly was there. There were flags flying. And a big brass band, too. Yes, sir, and it was all for me. It was not. They were welcoming a carload of coal. <laughs> Oh, is that what it was? You should have known when the band played, keep the home fires burning. Yeah, I, I never thought of that. Anyway, Mary, here we are in Chicago. You know, this is known as the Windy City. I know, Jack. Yesterday I saw you chasing your hair down the street. <laughs> it wasn't my hair I was chasing. It happened to be a cat. A cat? <laughs> yes, a cat. Then why were you trying to coax it back with a saucer of thick shampoo? <laughs> Mary, if you can't be nice to me, think of Boyer. And besides, there are a lot of my friends here from Waukegan. Oh, that's right, Jack. Your hometown is close to Chicago, isn't it? Close. Well, I could take a silver dollar out of my pocket and throw it as far as Waukegan. Let me see you do it. I will not. <laughs> throw a dollar. You tricked me into that once. The string broke. By the time I found it, inflation set in. It was only worth 63 cents. <laughs> So don't try to... Cheer up, Chicago. Your dim out is bad, but here comes Harris, that bright little lad. Yes. Put on that switch and let me lose. Oh, that opera. <laughs> That's my bread and butter, Jack. The nice way over there. Hey, Phil, what yes. do you want to come in with an entrance like that for? This dim out in Chicago is a serious thing. You're not kidding, Jackson. It is. Last night, Frankie, my guitar player, wrote out a check, and it was so dark he signed somebody else's name. What? Now they got him charged with arson. Arson? You mean forgery. No, arson. That check was so hot it burned down the bank. <laughs> oh, 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 Harris, you may not have bushy eyebrows, but you sure keep the country in an uproar. <laughs> Oh, fine, fine. You know, Phil, if Frankie did a thing like that, he must have been drinking. No, no. Libby, no, not my little Frankie. He's <laughs> on the wagon. Why, he hasn't had a drink. That kid hasn't had a drink since, um, since, uh... Since when? Wait a minute, I'm looking at my watch. <laughs> That's what I thought. Phil, forget about Frankie. After all, we came to Chicago to do a show, so let's do it. Yeah, good old Chicago. This is a great town, Jackson, but it's a little windy, isn't it? Well, of course, that's why they call it the Windy City. Yeah, yeah. Say, Jackson, uh, what was that I saw you chasing yesterday? Oh, uh, oh, that was a cat. Then how come when you caught it, you shook it out and put it on your head? 
I didn't put it on my head. It jumped up there. Then why did it have bangs? <laughs> because it jumped on backwards. <laughs> it happened to anybody. And, Mary, if I were you, I wouldn't be so smart just because we're away from home. You know, Marshall Field is not unlike the May Company. <laughs> you know that, and it won't be much fun working in the dark, either. Say, Jackson, I meant to ask you, how come they got this dim out here in Chicago? Phil, don't you know what's going on? Don't you read the papers? It's a kind of the coal shortage. Yeah, isn't it awful? Huh? Oh, hello, Dennis. Hello. Uh, anyway, Phil, uh, Phil, as I was saying... It's very easy to understand. You have to have coal to make electricity. Last night it was so dark I couldn't find my way back to the hotel. You couldn't, eh? You see, Phil, coal is the fuel they burn in boilers. Three times I fell over a fire plug. That's too bad. Now, they burn the coal to heat the water into steam. And then... Finally, an old lady had to help me across the street. <laughs> really? Uh, then they use the steam... You to be a Girl Scout. Good, good. Then they use the steam to spin the turbines which generate the electricity. Well, then how come we don't have a dim out in Los Angeles? Well, out there we don't use coal, you see. We get our electricity from Boulder Dam. Ooh, what he said. <laughs> Dennis, Boulder Dam is a place... He said it again! <laughs> oh, look, Dennis, I'm trying to explain something to Phil. Will you just be quiet and tell it's time for your song? Okay, but I don't know if I'll be able to sing good. I'm tired. Tired? Yeah, I had an awful time on the train. It's tough trying to sleep between Mr. Harris and his guitar player. Oh, you mean uh, too crowded? No, they kept setting the bottle on my stomach. <laughs> oh. And they were using my ear for an ashtray. <laughs> Oh, well, don't worry, Dennis. You can get plenty of sleep while we're here in Chicago. Now, let's have your song, and then we'll... Come in. Yes? Well, here we are, Mr. Benny. Huh? Well, don't you remember? You invited us over. We're the quiz kids. Oh, yes, yes, the quiz kids. <laughs> uh, take off your hats, kids. Take off your hats. Come right in. Come right, sit down and watch the show. Watch the show? I thought you invited us over for a quiz contest. A contest? You mean you kids want to compete with us? <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. That, that would be like taking candy from a baby. Oh, come now, Mr. Benny. You're not a baby. <laughs> That's not what I mean. When I gave you those four tickets, I merely wanted you to come over, enjoy the show, buy a few bottles of soda pop, and relax. That's all. Oh, Jack, they're only kids. If they want a contest, let's give it to them. But, Mary... You can ask them easy questions. What? Oh, oh, sure. We'll play with them, have a lot of fun. Well, all right, kids, if that's what you want, we'll do it right after Dennis Day's song. Oh, thank you, Mr. Benny. You're welcome. Now, Dennis, we're ready for your song. What are you going to sing tonight? Well, since this is Mother's Day, I'm going to sing Little Mother of Mine. That's mighty nice, Dennis. And incidentally, you didn't forget to send your mother something, did you? Oh, no, I sent her a big picture of me taken from the back. From the back? Why in the world did you send her a picture like that? Well, I wanted her to see how my new suit fits. Oh. She worries about things like that. I know, I know. Go ahead, let's have your song. While he's singing, I better think up some easy questions for the quiz kids, I think. Uh... Well, ladies and gentlemen, for our beach attraction, we're going to have a contest between the Lucky Strike Kid and the Quiz Kid. These children are here tonight to match wits with Mary Livingston, Don Wilson, Dennis Day, and Phil Harris, who are all raring to go. We'll learn them, eh, fellas? <laughs> that gives you an idea, folks. Now, I, I, of course, will be the quiz master. You'll be the quiz master? Certainly. When I went to school, I was smart as a whip. Go on, you even needed a blueprint to open your lunchbox. <laughs> oh, stop, will you? Now, come on, let's get started with our questions. First, we... Hold it a minute. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny, this is Rod Jester. Uh, I'm glad you called, Rochester. Does the manager of the hotel find a room for me? That's why I called. Uh, you got the bridal suite. The bridal suite? Good, good. Did you move all my stuff in? No, I'm waiting for you to get here. Why? I want to carry you over the threshold. <laughs> 
Oh, stop being silly and get my clothes unpacked. I can't do that, boss, until I shovel the rice out of the room. Shovel the rice out? Who had that bridal suite before me? Tommy Manville. <laughs> How do you know? There's a lawyer and a minister still sitting here. <laughs> oh, well, hurry up and get that room cleaned up. Okay, but it'll take hours and hours. Oh, Rochester, there couldn't be that much rice there. There couldn't. When I sit down in the middle of the room, I look like a raisin. <laughs> Never mind that. Never mind. Unpack my clothes and lay out a clean shirt. I'm going to the Chez Paris tonight. Okay, I'll give you the one with the cellophane front so John Boyer can see the floor show. <laughs> Good, good. Goodbye, Rochester. Goodbye. Oh, say, Rochester, did you do what I told you about the candles? You know, there's a dim out here. Yes, sir. I went to the store and bought 85 of them. 85 candles? How'd you get that many? When I told the man they were for you, he just handed them over and said, Tell Mr. Benny happy birthday. <laughs> well, that was very nice. Goodbye, Rochester. Goodbye. And now... Now, ladies and gentlemen, we're all set for the battle of wits. The quiz kids versus the Benny kids. And may the best team win. You mean may the better team win? Yes, yes. <laughs> better. <laughs> I used to know that when I went to school, too. <laughs> all right, let's go. <laughs> and now I'll call the roll. First, the quiz kids. I'm Harvey. <laughs> I'm Harvey Bennett Fishman. I'm 15 years old, and I'm a junior at the South Shore High School. Now, Joel? I'm Joel Kupperman. I'm nine years old, and I am in 5A in the Bolton Public School. Oh, yes. You're the little fellow who's so clever in mathematics. Tell me, Joel, if an egg costs 5 cents, how much would a three-egg omelet cost? 15 cents. That's right. He's never been to the Chez Paris. <laughs> Mary. You mean they, they charge more there? Uh-uh, boy, he's going to bed early tonight. <laughs> he is not. We can always go out for a walk. Now, Ruthie. I'm Ruthie Duskin. I'm 11 years old, and I'm in the 8th grade at the University of Chicago Laboratory School. Cute, isn't she? Now, Richard. Richard. I am Richard Leitzler. I'm 6 years old, and I... Um, and I am in 1A at Shakespeare Public School. Six years old. Gosh, it seems... It seems like... <laughs> I wish you could see him, folks, the listeners. Gosh, uh, it seems like only yesterday that I was sick. Hmm? Gee, Mr. Benny, that must have been about 30 years ago. Uh, 31, Richard, 31. Have a bottle of pop on me. And <laughs> And now, <laughs> and now for the Benny kids. Philip? I'm Philip Harris. I live in Encino, California, and three nights a week I attend the Hollywood Recreation Pool Room. <laughs> and Nikki, what do you specialize in, Philip? The four ball in the side pocket. <laughs> very good, very good. And now, Mary? I am Mary Livington. I live in Beverly Hills, and I graduated from the May Company. Oh, that's a lovely place. Uh, what did you learn there? If you've worn the stockings, madam, you cannot exchange them. <laughs> Very good. Isn't she bright? Now, Donald. I am Donald Wilson. I'm six years old, and I weigh 243 pounds. <laughs> He's the cutest one of all. What is your ambition, Donald? I haven't any. That's why I'm so fat. <laughs> I thought so. Sit down, but easy. Now, uh, Dennis. I am Dennis. 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 Day. Dennis Day. Uh, how old are you, Dennis? I'll be one in December. <laughs> you'll, uh... <laughs> Wait a minute. You'll be one? Yes, my mother's raffling me off. <laughs> Well, you're a turkey if I ever saw one. Huh? <laughs> and now, folks, that you've met all the kiddies, we will proceed with the battle of wit. And for each question used, I will score one point for the side that answers correctly. 
And furthermore, I am personally awarding a prize of $10 to the winning team. Well, that's fair enough. You'll find out. There it is. Now, our first question this evening comes from Mrs. Leonard Fenchel of Chicago. Listen carefully, Harvey. A Coleoptera, a Musca Domestica, and a Lepidoptera were having a bit of a tete-a-tete on a screen door. Now, if you suddenly appeared with a fly swatter, one of the party would leave quite hastily. Which one would it be? The Coleoptera, the Musca Domestica, or the Lepidoptera? Have you got the answer, Harvey? Well, the Musca Domestica would leave because it's the common housefly. Oh. I mean, very good. Very good, Harvey. <laughs> That's, um, that's one point for the quiz kid. Now, Dennis, in order to be absolutely fair, I'm going to ask you a question along the same line. Now, listen carefully. What fly would you associate with butter? <laughs> well, uh, well, uh... That might be a little tough, so I'll put it this way. Butter is associated with what fly? The butterfly. Ruthie, I didn't ask you. Dennis, you didn't hear that answer, did you? No, I've got ashes in my ear. <laughs> oh. Mary Livingston. The butterfly. Correct. And there's a point for the Benny kid. Both sides are even. Wait a minute, Mr. Benny. Sorry, Harvey, but we won on a technicality. Now, uh, let's see. Oh, brother, where do you get on their show? Mary, please. Now, here's a problem of mathematics sent in by Clifford Gordon, 10th Street, Waukegan, Illinois. Well, gee, Mr. Benny, if it's a problem in mathematics, just ask Joel Kupperman. Oh. I have another question. <laughs> From Julia Sinek in Waukegan, Illinois. I think you can answer this, Ruthie. I'm ready, Mr. Benny. Now, this problem is in the field of ichthyology. Ichthyology? What's that? How do I know? Anyway, Ruthie, name the five types of fishes in order of their development and give examples of each. Go ahead. The size must be matter, which are lamprey eels and hag fishes. Next comes the elastomal branchi, the sharks and rays. That's right. Next, the gonoidei, which are the armored fishes. Uh-huh. After that come the teleostomy, the true fishes. Yes. And last of all, the dipnoi, which are the lung fishes. Isn't that amazing? Very good, Ruthie. Now, Philip Harris. Yes, sir. I think it's only fair that I ask you the same type of question. How do you spell fish? <laughs> Come on, Philip, go ahead. How do you spell fish? F-I-S-C-H. That's right. That's right, Joe Fish. I know him well. <laughs> That's two points for the quiz kids and two points for the Benny kids. Now, Richard, here's a problem in mathematics that comes from Dave Wolf of Chicago. Well, Mr. Benny, if it's a problem in mathematics, why don't you ask Joel Kupperman? Harvey, don't tell me how to run my contest. I'm going to ask Richard. Now, Richard, two men who earn $450 and $150 a month, respectively, decide to build a house and divide the cost in proportion to their income. Each of these two men has three sons who help with the work, but they cannot work full-time. One works every day, the second every other day, the third every third day, and so on. Are you, uh, are you following, Richard? Yes, are you? <laughs> Don't worry about me, bub. <laughs> Now, they all work the first day, and they finish the house. The second day, they all work together. Each guy has three kids, huh? Well, go away, will you? You know from nothing. Now, Richard. Richard, one joint owner. I mean, one joint owner. <laughs> has to pay $1,500 more than the other. How much did the house cost, and how long did it take to build it? Well, Dennis, I see you got your hand up. What is the answer? Butterfly. <laughs> right, that's three for the Benny kids and two Wait for... a minute, wait a minute, Mr. Benny. We were on another question. Oh, yes, yes, I'm sorry. Well, Richard, have you got the answer yet? Richard? Yes, sir. The house cost $3,000 
and it would take 60 days to build it. Excellent. $3,000 and 60 days is correct. How do you know? I trust Richard. <laughs> Uh, now, let's see. Oh, Mr. Benny. What is it, Dennis? Button the shirt. Charles Boyer is peeping out. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> well, Richard earned another point for the quiz kids, making it three to three. Now, Mary, here's your question. The answer is 15. Wait till I ask you. <laughs> now, Mary, concentrate. If you had 20 apples and your mother took away 10 and gave you back five, how many would you have? Fifteen. You heard me. How did you know I was going to ask you? Boye told me. Now, cut that out. Boye told you. I told you to button your shirt. Quiet. <laughs> the score is now five to three in favor of the Benny kid. Now, Harvey, here's a question for you. Well, if it's mathematics, ask Joe Kupperman. I just changed it to history. Now, listen. What did the United States purchase from Denmark after World War I? The Virgin Islands for uh, $21 million. You're wrong. It was $25 million. It was $21 million. The United States paid $25 million. Jack ought to know. They borrowed the money from him. <laughs> Certainly. I remember when I took Woodrow Wilson down into my ball. Now, another question in history. Dennis, who was the first president of the United States? Come on, Dennis. Who was the first president of the United States? Uh, uh... Come on. George? George? My name is Dennis. I know. <laughs> now, who was the first president of the United States? He was the father of our country. George? George? Jessel. No! <laughs> anyway, I'm asking Dennis. My name is George. It is not. <laughs> All right, Phil, I'll ask you. Who was the first president of the United States? George? George? What do women do on Monday? Washing? That's right. George? Washing? Washing? Yeah. What am I sticking out at you? Your tongue. Correct. George Washing tongue. <laughs> the score is six to three in favor of the Betty kids. We win, and the $10 bill goes to me. Wait a minute, wait a minute. This is a frame-up. Frame-up? These questions were on the up and up. Well, you were cheating. Oh, yeah? Well, it's a good thing Richard didn't say that. Believe me. Oh, come on, kids. Let's go. Let's get out of here. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. How do you like that? A bunch of sore losers. Play, genius. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. program starring Jack Denny with Barry Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. From New York City, that body of land that was purchased from the Indians for $24, we bring you a man who could have gotten it for $22.50. And here he is, Jack Benny. hard to work and look at that face over there. <laughs> Thank you. Say hello again. This is Jack Betty talking. And Don, I can't tell you how thrilled I am being in New York. Oh, I know just how you feel, Jack. In fact, the moment we arrived in town and I saw the reception we got, my chest swelled out with pride. Don, from where I stand, your stomach is even prouder than your chest. <laughs> But there's something about this city that's different. No matter how many times you come to New York, you get a feeling of expansion, of growth. The trees look taller. The buildings look taller. Even the mayor looks taller. <laughs> oh, Kitty, it's amazing. Now, wait a minute, Jack. The mayor is taller. What? You mean LaGuardia found out about Adler's shoes? <laughs> No, no, Jack, no. LaGuardia isn't mayor anymore. New York has a new one now. Oh, really? No, O'Dwyer. Don. <laughs> oh, wait. Let's not, steal, let's not steal jokes from Danny Kaye. You know, I've got four writers. Oh, really? No, O'Perrin, O'Balzer, O'Tackaberry, and O'Gluster. <laughs> now, where were we? 
Well, I was just telling you that O'Dwyer is a lot taller than LaGuardia. Well, maybe he is, Don, but after he chases fire engines for 12 years, his legs will be worn down, too, <laughs> believe me. So you never can tell... Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Hello, everybody. <laughs> I was just telling Don how thrilled I am being back in New York. Well, I don't blame you, Jack. Yes, sir. There's something about New York that's invigorating. I, why, the minute I got off the train at the station, I felt stronger. Is that why you put on a red cap and carried your own bag? <laughs> I just did that for a laugh. A laugh? And how come you went back and carried somebody else's bag? When I get a laugh, I'm not letting it go, sister. <laughs> And anyway, those other bags belong to a very important man. Oh, really? No, Dwyer, and shut up. <laughs> Say, Mary, have you been having any fun in New York? Uh-huh, but I've been spending most of my time in New Jersey visiting my mother. Oh, yes, yes, your mother. How is the William Bendix of Plainfield? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mama's fine, but really? Papa's having a lot of trouble getting up the stairs. Why? Mama keeps throwing them down. <laughs> Sounds a little like Titus Moody in there, that one. I can understand. Anyway, Mary, how's the rest of your folks? I mean, how's your sister, Babe? she get married yet? No, Jack, and Babe's heartbroken about it. You know, last week she was going to elope with a new boyfriend. And what happened? She couldn't get the ladder up to his window. Oh, that's too bad. Yes, yeah, so she threw him a rope. Oh, that's good. No, he took another look at Babe and hung himself. <laughs> Oh, that's too bad, huh? No, that's good. Now she's engaged to the undertaker. Oh, really? No, Shapiro. Now, <laughs> shut I merely ask you how your folks are. You make a whole mishmash out of it. Yes, and the people who tune in late didn't mishmash. Oh. Every time we come to New York, you... Hey, Mr. Benny, I'd like to have you meet a friend of mine. Oh, hello, Dennis. Hello. Hey, Mr. Benny, I'd like to have you meet a friend of mine. How are you feeling, kid? Fine. Hey, Mr. Benny, I'd like to have you meet a friend of mine. You having a good time in New York? I sure am. Me and this friend of mine went out all over town, and we had a lot of fun. I showed him how to jump over fire plugs, and he showed me how to hitch rides on the back of trolley cars. I don't know where you pick up. Where's your friend? Right out in the hall. I'll go and get him. Dennis and his friend. Say, Mary. Here he is, Mr. Benny. Isn't he cute? Dennis, they found the other 499 monkeys. Take this one back to the pet. <laughs> Imagine picking up... Quiet. Imagine picking up a monkey for a friend. You no know, wonder he was teaching Dennis how to hitch rides in the back of trolley cars. I fell off twice. What? I couldn't hang by my tail. <laughs> Dennis, stop being ridiculous. Where'd you meet this monkey? Well, I was walking along and I saw him standing on the corner waiting for a light to change. Oh, for heaven's sake. Mary, tonight after the show. Oh, I took him by the hand and helped him across the street. All right, all right. Mary, tonight after the show. Let's then I started to sing and before I knew it, we had forty dollars in nickels. <laughs> forty dollars in nickels. Jack, stop taking that monkey. <laughs> Just trying to take him out of the upper bracket. <laughs> he is kind of cute. Come here, monkey. Goody, goody, goo. Goody, goo. Oh, look, it jumped up on me. Dennis, please get the monkey off Jack's shoulder. No, no, he's all right. Well, at least move his tail and you look like Jerry Colonna. <laughs> Jerry Colonna? What's the matter? You crazy or something? Dennis! <laughs> Take it easy, monkey. Just sit on my chair. Hiya, folks. Harris is here. I couldn't get a room, so I slept last night with Grant in his tomb. <laughs> Lay it on me. Make for that New York fatty cake. <laughs> hey, Jackson, what's that thing you got on your shoulder? Well, it's a monkey, a real live monkey. Come on, get down. Well, what do you know? Where'd you get it, Jackson? It isn't mine. Uh, Dennis picked it up last night. Isn't that silly? I don't know. It looks better than what you picked up the night before. <laughs> oh, yeah? She was a pretty classy dame. Yeah, yeah. Say, uh, were those her legs or were stockings filled with walnuts? <laughs> Bill, one more crack like that and you're going back to California. When's the train leaving? I don't know. I'll call Truman and find out. <laughs> So 
watch her. Say, Phil, have you seen any show since we got to town? Yeah, Liddy, I saw Are You With It? Are You With It? That's the show that two of Jack Ryder's wrote. I saw it 12 times. 12 times? Jack's got the candy confession there. Lemonade, lemonade. I'm down to my last sugar stand, too. Oh, well. What other shows have you seen, Mr. Benny? Uh, Call Me Mister. I did. Call Me Mister is the name of a show. (laughs) What happened to Are You With It? Nothing, nothing. Then you're getting dumber every day. Take last week with the quiz kids. Such confidence. You came to me and said, don't worry, Mr. Benny. I'll pull you through to ultimate victory. That's right, Dennis. And we ought to thank Mary. She's the one that pulled us through to ultimate. <laughs> Phil, that's ultimate victory. Ultimate is an adjective. Why not? <laughs> Phil, if I thought for a minute that this monkey could lead an orchestra, I know who would go back to the pet shop. Now, come on, Dennis. Let's have your song, will you? We'll Gather Lilac, sung by Dennis Day, accompanied by Phil Harris's orchestra, which was conducted by Dennis Day's friend who used his tail for a baton. And very good. And now, you're welcome. And now, folks, if my mother knew I was doing this, she'd kill me. <laughs> I won't tell her, Bob. That's our, uh, that's our producer. We made him a monkey for today. <laughs> very few producers can be monkeys, you know, <laughs> And now, folks... Oh, damn it. Come in. Telegram for Jack Benny. That's my writer. He's from Brooklyn. Everybody works on the show. Eh? Take it. Uh, take it. Take it, Mary. Here you are, boy. Here's a tip for you. Oh, boy. A glass of lemonade. <laughs> You'll suffer. You wrote that joke yourself. <laughs> I just happen to have one in my pocket, the lemonade. I'm going back to that, sir. Who's the, uh, who's the telegram from, Mary? Fred Allen. Fred Allen? What does it say? Uh, dear Jack, I am expecting you as a guest on my program next Sunday. I'm sure you'll be there, as I haven't had any luck all season. Hmm. Isn't that, isn't that sarcastic? Sounds like an adjective. Dennis! <laughs> But imagine the nerve of Alan after he came over to my hotel and pleaded with me, begged me, even offered me money to be a guest on his show. Then he sends a wire like this. Jack, Jack, do you mean that Alan came to your hotel and begged you to be on his program? Oh, Don, I, I don't even want to discuss it. I'll tell you what happened, Don. Mary, please. I happened to be over at Jack's hotel, the Acme Plaza. 500 rooms, three baths. Mary. <laughs> and I thought nylon lines were long. <laughs> now, Mary... When I got into the hotel lobby, the elevator wasn't working, so I had to walk down four flights of stairs to get to Jack's room. Mary, they're not interested in this thing. Anyway, I got through talking to Jack and was just about to leave. Jack? What do you want me to come by your room for? Well, you know, we're going home next week, Mary, and I want to take something back for my girlfriend, Gladys Abisko. Uh, what would you suggest? Well, why don't you get her a nice beaver coat? No, 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 that's, that's too expensive. Well, how about a nice sealskin coat? No, no, that, that's a little too expensive, too. Why don't you just get her a rowboat and a harpoon and let her do her own shopping? <laughs> I did that once. She got seasick. I'll tell you what, Mary, just pick out anything you like. You know, you'll know what to get. No jewelry or fur. I know, I know. Goodbye. All right, so long. Be careful going up the stairs. Yeah, I hope Mary picks out something nice. Oh, boy, if I feel the job for you. Thanks, Rochester. Uh, Rochester, have you got everything ready for my bath? Yes, sir. Towel, soap, talcum powder, bath mat, bath robe, bath salt, and your two little celluloid ducks. Fine, fine. And, Rochester, I didn't think it was a bit funny last Saturday night when you put tacks in the bottom of the bathtub. Those were bath salts. Oh. They haven't disintegrated yet. Disintegrated? That's a verb. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, they were sharp as an adjective. Well, I think I'll go in for my bath now. See you later. Then. So I've gone this hotel room show as a mess. That was some part of the boss through last night. Coca-Cola flew like wine. <laughs> I've never seen the boss so merry. He slaps his sponsor on the back so hard he's wild as cigarettes. 
Lucky sight, that is. <laughs> and when Mr. Bailey got up and told that story about the octopus, I thought I... I wonder who that can be. Come in! Hello, Rochester. Is Mr. Benny in? Well, Mr. Allen! Come right in, Mr. Allen. Mr. Benny's taking a bath. He'll be out in a few minutes. Well, I'll wait for him. How is Mr. Benny feeling, I hope? Pretty good. <laughs> that is considering the big party he threw last night. Mr. Benny threw a party? Yeah, the atomic bomb, and now this. <laughs> What, uh, what was Gromico's reaction, Rochester? <laughs> Tell me, was the party a success? Yeah, what a soiree. There was sandwiches, music, and dances. Well, it's a soiree. That's a conjunction, isn't it? <laughs> well, it sounds, as, it sounds as though everybody had a good time. Yeah, Mr. Benny enjoyed himself so much, he said next time he might invite girls. <laughs> oh, it was a stag party. Uh, up until 11 o'clock, then the night maid came on. <laughs> well, that's Benny, the chambermaid pinup boy. <laughs> He's just as democratic as ever. Failure hasn't gone to his head. Has it? <laughs> Say, uh, Rochester, will you tell Mr. Benny I'm here? Yes, sir. Why don't you just sit down and make yourself comfortable? Here's one of Mr. Benny's favorite books. I Stand Condemned. Oh, uh, that's the story about the man who goes to the electric chair and leaves three lovely children, cream, cheese, and bagel. I hear Lindy selected it as the book of the month. They give you a smoked herring for a bookmark. With the quarter size, they give you an anchovy bookmark. I think. Well, Rochester, I'm through ad-libbing. You can tell Mr. Benny to come out now. Oh, he'll come out just as soon as he can think of something funny to say. <laughs> well, I can't wait that long. <laughs> tell him to come out in pantomime, if you will. Uh-oh, boss! You've got company! Who is it? You'll be sorry! Off a minute. Rochester, what are you? Well, Fred. Fred Allen. Hello, Jack. I was just taking a bath. Well, that's good, Jack. I think everyone should have a hobby. <laughs> yeah, okay. you want to know something, Fred? Those pens do write underwater. I found that. Uh, boss, you better put your robe on. You'll catch cold with just that towel around you. Oh, I'll be all right. Gosh, Jack, you've, uh, you've gotten sort of fat, haven't you? Don't be funny. <laughs> Your hips have jowls, I know. <laughs> well, I'll be Fred, you haven't changed a bit. Same hair, same forehead, same eyebrows, same eyes. Fred, lift those bags a little. I want to see your teeth. <laughs> Put on your red cap and lift them yourself. <laughs> I will not. Fred, what's the reason for this friendly visit? Well, Jack, hang on to your towel. I've come to ask you to be a guest on my radio program. Oh. Well, gee, Fred, I'd love to be a guest on your show, but I can't. I already have a date for Wednesday night. For your... For Wednesday night? Yes. For your information, Mr. B, I do my broadcast on Sunday night right after yours. And when the wind is from the opposite direction, I must say I don't mind it at all. <laughs> What did you say? If you'll take that celluloid duck out of your ear, you'd hear me. Oh, oh. Well, Fred, give me the details about going on your program. Well, Jack, I thought as long as you were, were here in town, you might like to appear on my show. Get in off of the street for a little while someday. <laughs> well, but if you're going to add lip, do it on your own show where you need it. <laughs> you can use it, too, don't forget it. You could have used me ten minutes ago. I was listening. Really? <laughs> if we keep on much longer, McCarthy will be on, make a monkey out of both of us. <laughs> That's one eighth, uh, that is. <laughs> of course, uh, about coming on the show, I'm willing to pay you. Pay me? Uh, yes. Yeah, stop trembling and pick up your towel. Oh. <laughs> well, look, Fred. <laughs> Fred, as long as this is a business proposition, let's discuss it. Sit down here, have a cigarette. Thank you. Have a tea bag. <laughs> oh, 
boy, my favorite brand. Now, Fred, guess what makes you think I'd consider appearing on your program? Well, I saw your ad in the Hobo News. <laughs> my ad? Yes, the ad that read, Now in Town, Jack Denny. Available for theatrical dates, guest star appearances, and for two shillings, we'll meet English brides at the dock if husbands are detained. <laughs> Must be seen portal to portal pay. Oh, that ad. <laughs> that was just putting the papers as a gag by my press agent. Yes. That gag killed him in Chicago and paid Mr. Benny's fan in New York. Rogers, I didn't know you were still here. In a one-room suite, where else would I be? <laughs> Well, Mr. Allen and I are having a private conversation. Now, Fred, let's get back to business. Well, Jack, I'm stuck. I had another guest for next week, but she couldn't make it. Uh, who was this other guest? The one that oh, you still haven't had a joke on the whole program. <laughs> You're reading the wrong line to straight line? <laughs> the, uh, my guest is the one and only Marcella Crudney. Marcella Crudney? Yes. You haven't heard of her? She's with the New York Yankees. You see, the Yankees have a pitcher whose specialty is the spitball. On hot summer days, when the pitcher might uh, run dry, Marcella stands by... Oh, her! Yes, her! her. <laughs> but uh, she was suspended for spraying an umpire. <laughs> Marcella was at work as Zephyr came up, and need I say more? Anyway, Jack, when Marcella couldn't make it, I tried to get John Charles Fido, the singing dog. But he had laryngitis. I see, so you finally got down to me. Down is right. <laughs> Why in the world did you ever take a hotel room that's so far underground as this? Oh, Fred, my room isn't so far underground. It isn't. I came into the lobby and got the bend. <laughs> and then I kept walking downstairs until I was stopped by John L. Lewis. Mr. Lewis put a lamp on my head and said it's okay for two weeks. <laughs> I'm glad he put the lamp on because that's the first bright thing to come from your head in years. <laughs> the last act was for Maria Cooper. Did you hear that, Maria? Good. And now, Fred, while we're discussing this, let's have a bite to eat. I'll call room service. Hello, room service, please. Yeah, da dee da dum da da dum da da dum Hello, room service? Please send down two Acme Plaza special dinners. Right away, please. Thank you. Now, Fred, look, why can't I appear on your program this Sunday night instead of next? Well, I'm sorry, Jack, but I have my guest star for this week. He's your band leader. You mean Phil Harris, Shoe Fly Pie, and Apple Pan Rowdy? <laughs> yes, you see, Jack, around this time of the year, Maestro Al Goodman begins to worry about his options. So I thought I'd bring Harris over tonight and give Mr. Goodman confidence. I see, but I better warn you about rehearsing. I better warn you about rehearsing Phil. He'll have to memorize his script. You mean Mr. Harris can't read? Only the labels on bottles. <laughs> when he graduated from school, everybody else got diplomas. He got a sheepskin corkscrew. Well, look, Jack. Don't stop me. I'm rolling. Or well, I thought I was when we rolled it. Now, go ahead. Rolling? How can a square roll? And thanks for the lemonade, too. Well, Jack, I've got to run along now. I'll see you on my program next Sunday. Uh, wait a minute. We haven't discussed money. How much are you going to pay me? Well, now, let's see. The union scale for the average radio actor is $67.50. What? However, you're the star of your own radio program. That would bring it up to $69.75. Now, look. Of course, you're from California, and you're not as well known here in the East. That brings it down to $68. Wait a minute. You've forgotten I'm in picture. Oh, yes. That brings it down to $47.60. <laughs> now, Fred. We'll have to hire three people to start your applause. I'll furnish them. And the guy that yells, you'll be sorry, gets $15. Now, you know. Fred, I'm not going... You'd better think fast, Betty. That singing doll just had pups, and I can get a quartet of cocker spaniels for nothing. Okay, I'll take it. I'll be on your program next week. Not so loud. I don't want to li lose my listeners. You lost the line already. <laughs> Why, you delicatessen, Sarandi, you've got less listeners than the Siamese twins with one of them out of town. What are you talking about? I've got more listeners than you have hair in your bureau drawer. <laughs> Why, you nasal nitwit, I wouldn't work on your program if it was the last... Twenty-five dollars, take it or leave it. What time is rehearsal? Two o'clock, Sunday, and Goodbye. Hello? Say, 
boss, will you need me during the evenings next week? I don't think so. Why? I got a chance to do a little extra work at the Zanzibar nightclub starting Tuesday. Oh, the Zanzibar. You signed that contract, huh? Uh Uh-huh. Did you speak to them like I told you to? Yeah, but I'm sorry, boss. They want me to work alone. Oh, oh. Well, we'll be down to see you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Good night, folks. Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Barry Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, since tonight is our last broadcast of the season, I would like to pay tribute to the star of our show. Fifteen years ago, a kind and gracious young man started his radio career at the tender age of 37. I was... I was awfully tender. And tonight, 15 years later... He's still kind, still gracious, and still 37, and here he is, Jack Benny. Thank you. Thank you. Hello again. This is Jack Benny talking, and Don, that was a very silly statement to make. If I was 37 and that was 15 years ago, today I'd be 49. You mean 52? I can get it wholesale. Anyway, for your information, Don, when I started a radio 15 years ago, I was 22. What are you talking about? I knew you then, and you had gray hair. Don, I was born with gray hair. I was worried about the doctor bill. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't pay him slapping me when my back was turned. <laughs> and, Don, here's an amazing coincidence. If you read it in the story, you wouldn't believe it. After all these years, who do you think is sitting in the audience this very moment? The doctor. No, his lawyer. The case comes up in court. (laughs) Anyway, Don, since this is the last program of the year, I've got a surprise for you. I'm giving everybody a bonus. Here's a check for you. Well, thanks, Jack. I know it isn't much, but it'll... Well, it'll help you get back to California. This check will help me get back to California? (laughs) Turn it over, bro- over, brother. There's a road map on the other side. <laughs> I nearly killed that one. Good. My first good joke that I did to that. And Don, never look a gift phone in the mouth. I want to say that. Right. Oh, hello, hello, hello. Hello, Jack. Hello, hello, hello. Here's the last program. Let's go nuts all together. (laughs) Mary, I'm glad you came in. I was just telling Don that since this is the last program of the season, I'm giving everybody in the cast a bonus. Oh, Jack, how can you afford it after that bonus you gave me last year? What did he give you, Mary? A dozen bobby pins. (laughs) You got two dozen. That wasn't your fault. Phil Harris got a short haircut and had no use for them. (laughs) All right, all right, but this year it's different. Now, here's your bonus, Mary. Take this and go out and buy yourself a new dress. Here. Oh, boy, a do-bell at Klein's. <laughs> yes, sir. I got that by mentioning them on the air. Uh, when'd you do that? Just now. <laughs> but, Jack, I was the one that mentioned Klein. Uh-oh, now they owe us another one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait a minute, Jack. Do you mean when you mention the name of a product, they give you one free? Well, sometimes, Mary, but you have to do it cleverly. Oh. Which reminds me, Mary... On the way home, I'm going to stop at Plymouth Rock. <laughs> then I'm going to Pontiac, Michigan. <laughs> and if I can afford it, I'll take you out some night and show you how a cattle acts. Well, you certainly packed them all in. <laughs> Thanks, Mary. That was a Buick. Say, hey, Mary. Say, Mary, where are you going to spend your vacation this summer? Inside of a Longine watch. I can go along with a plug. (laughs) Just be happy with your dress. But I'm not kidding, Mary. Where are you going to spend your vacation? In in Grand Central Station. I like peace and quiet. That joke was written 3 o'clock yesterday. (laughs) It's amazing what 24 hours can do to a gag, isn't it? Oh, hello, Dennis. Hello. Uh, Dennis, since this is the last program of the season, I thought it would be... How do you feel, Mr. Benny? Fine. 
Uh, Dennis, since this is the last program of the season... Are you I... having any fun, kid? <laughs> Uh, Dennis, since this is the last program... What day are you going home, Mr. Benny? Wednesday. Uh, Dennis, since this is the last program... How about a bonus? <laughs> That's what I'm trying to tell you. I'm giving every member of my cast a bonus. Oh, am I a member? <laughs> Certainly. Is that why you make me pay dues? <laughs> has nothing to do with it. That money I deduct from your salary I'm putting away for your nest egg. My nest egg? Yeah, Mother Hen Benny will keep it warm for you. I don't have to worry about a nest egg, Mary. I'm expecting a call from my sponsor any minute to pick up my option. Believe me, this year I'm going to be even tougher to get than last year. Yeah, you're really tough to get. Well, I was. Oh, sure. The sponsor laid the contract on the table, pointed to the dotted line, and you signed so fast you put half your name on his finger. <laughs> On his finger, on his finger, some joke. <laughs> now, let's get on with Say, this. Mr. Benny, how about my bonus? Oh, yes, I, uh... Oh, wait a minute, I just happened to think of it. I gave you your bonus yesterday. Oh, yes, I forgot. Thanks very much. You're welcome. Uh, what'd you get, Dennis? A dress at Klein's. <laughs> <laughs> what? With a peekaboo waist. <laughs> I have to take home to your mother. And another thing, kid, I got a surprise for you. I may be able to give you a car. A car? Yeah, a few minutes ago I mentioned the name of a lot of automobiles, the names, and naturally they'll all send me one. Gee, that won't work, Mr. Benny. I tried it once. I mentioned Mercury. And what happened? They sent me a thermometer. <laughs> oh. So I took my temperature. It was 106. What? Boy, was I burned up. Dennis. That's a joke, son. I'm glad you told me. Now, come on, Dennis. Let's have a song, will you? Come on. They say they're falling in love. They say it's wonderful. From Annie Get Your Gun, sung by Dennis Day. Very good kid, and I'm happy to know that you're going to be with me next season. Mr. Benny, you tricked me into signing my contract. <laughs> tricked you? Dennis, your new contract calls for $38 a week. And that's what I'm going to pay you, $38 a week. So how did I trick you? When you held me upside down, it looked like 83. <laughs> oh, stop. Why, Jack, that's the silliest thing I ever heard of. If he wanted to trick Dennis, why didn't he hold the contract upside down? <laughs> With all the pages that had, Dennis was lighter. Yeah. <laughs> so let's... All right, folks, you can drive that trail. Because Harris is sure to be back next year. I'll be here. Ladies and applause on enough to run me through the summer, you know. Hey, Bill, I heard that. You don't have to worry about the summer. I'm giving you and every member of the cast a bonus. Look, Jackson, I know all about your bonuses. If you really want to do something, just give me a little raise in salary. A raise in salary? Phil, you're the only man in the country that can't strike because you know you're overpaid now. <laughs> and you can take that miner's lamp off your head. You're not fooling anybody. <laughs> I gave you a raise, I know what you do with it. Now, look, you're wrong this time, Jackson. I'm on the wagon. You're on the wagon? The trains weren't running. I had to get on something. <laughs> oh. Look, Jackson, I haven't had a drink since we've been in New York. What are you talking about? I saw you in a bar last night. You ordered a double scotch. That was to dip my tie in. <laughs> dip your tie in? I can quit drinking the stuff, but I'm not going to stop smelling it. <laughs> Should have known. When you get undressed at night, you hang your clothes in the closet, put your tie in the chandelier. Hey, Phil, let me look at that tie. Is it pure silk? No, it's a blend. Now cut that out! <laughs> Imagine dipping your tie in scotch. Yes, sir, I'm the only guy in town with a wet cravat. <laughs> oh, Harris, when you leave New York, they're going to hang all the comedians at half mast. <laughs> one they should hang, they won't. I mean, <laughs> people, now you know why I need a vacation. Oh, my goodness, I nearly forgot. Don, hand me that glass of water, please. I want to take this pill. Oh, here you are. Thanks. 
Jack, what was that pill you just took? Well, after our show tonight, I have to go over and appear on Fred Allen's program. But what was the... Benzedrine. I want to keep awake. <laughs> Better off asleep. I wouldn't have to look at those bags under his eyes. <laughs> Alan's got the only face I ever saw with patch pockets. <laughs> oh, Jack, you're just jealous of Fred because he's such a great ad libber. Oh, some great ad libber. I can ad lib better than Alan with one writer tied behind my back. <laughs> Every week is the same thing. Portland says, Mr. Allen, Mr. Allen, it's time to visit the alley. Shall we go? And then the genius answers. <laughs> well, Portland, as one striptease dancer said to the other, let's take off. <laughs> and those people, and those people, he those people he meets down there, that, that Titus Moody. Howdy, Bob. Dennis. <laughs> what, what people see in Alan, I don't know. He tries to read a script, the words get blocked by his nose, then they get kicked around by his tonsils, bounced off his adenoids, and because it comes out different than the way it's written, they say he ad libs. <laughs> Believe me, I'm a better. I'm I better. I'm better than he is. That's three better. I'm three times as good. As <laughs> I can ad lib. Go on. You couldn't ad lib a yawn after a gallon of Ovaltine. I can too. <laughs> say, Phil, you were on Alan's program last week, weren't you? Yeah. And say, Jackson, you want to know something? What? Did you know that I found out something about Senator Claghorn? Oh, what? He's from the South. <laughs> No. So help me, Petrillo. <laughs> Thanks for telling me, Phil. Now, come on, let's have a band now. Okay. Tell you something, that's one on you, Jackson. This ain't even my band. These are New York boys. Well, how'd you happen to pick them up? Easy. I was just walking down the street, and they followed my tie. <laughs> oh. Turn loose, Max. Not till after the show. Hmm. No matter where we go, Phil, you always get the same... I'll get it. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny. This is Rochester. What is it, Rochester? I got your trunk all packed and loaded on the mule. Rochester, the railroad strike is over. You got the mule before the strike was on. Well, I'm taking the train. I'm kind of sorry you're not going back with me, but I'm glad you got that nice job at the Zanzibar Cafe. Oh, thanks for letting me take it, boss. Uh, but ain't I the one that's supposed to get the 90%? <laughs> Yes, but I'm keeping it for you for a nest egg. Well, push the hen off. I'm hungry. <laughs> It'll be safe for me, Rochester. Don't worry. And do a good job at the Zanzibar. I will. And before I hang up, boss, I want to thank you and the cast for coming over Tuesday night. The audience sure laughed when you got up and told those jokes. Yeah. And Rochester, I bet nobody there dreamed I'd get up and play the violin. Obviously, the place was full. <laughs> I don't know about that. They liked it. Oh, by the way, boss, how did you like that routine I did about you and Mr. Allen? Well, I couldn't hear all of it. There was some guy under our table making a lot of noise. Oh, him? That was the plumber Mr. Harris hired. What? He was laying a pipeline to the bar. A pipeline? Big ink shit. <laughs> Well, that was ridiculous. By the way, Roger, why don't you sing that song, Accentuate the Positive? I always liked the way you did that. I did sing it. You just didn't hear me. That was when you were arguing with the waiter about the check. I wasn't arguing with him. He charged me too much for the beer, and I was just pointing out his mistake. That was no mistake in a nightclub. You don't get a nickel back on the bottle. <laughs> Clip joint. Anyway, Roger, you go on and have a good time here, and I'll see you when you get home. And by the way, I have a little bonus for you. I'll mail it to you. Never mind. I'll go down to Clines and pick it up myself. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Goodbye, Rochester, and good luck. So long. All the bar, that is. Well, kids, in a few minutes, our last program will be over. And we probably won't be seeing much of each other until September. But uh, here are your assignments for this week. On Wednesday night, you must listen to the radio because Dave Rose is going to conduct his Waukegan Concerto, which is written especially for me. And next Sunday at the same time, I want you to listen to the Frank Morgan Show, which is replacing us for the summer. It's going to be great. Frank has always done a swell job, 
and I know he's going to be back in fine form. And now, kids, before I kiss each one of you goodbye, I want to... Come in. Well, hello, Jack. Hello, Ed. Look, kids, it's Ed Sullivan. Ed, it, it was nice of you to drop in on my last program. You know the gang, Mary, Don, Dennis, and Phil. Hello, Ed. Hello, Ed. Nice to see you. Yes, Jack, I've met them all except Phil. Yeah, we ain't never had the pleasure. Well, I'll remedy that. Phil, I'd like you to meet Ed Sullivan. Ed is the famous columnist. Well, hello, Ed. When'd you leave Moscow? I said columnist. <laughs> My goodness, Phil. Uh, tell me, Ed... Ed, what's the, uh, him I'm going to have back next year? <laughs> Ed, what's the uh, occasion for this visit? Well, Jack, I came over to present you with an award. An award for me? Mm-hmm, but first I'd like to get a little interview. See, our readers would like to know exactly what goes on behind the scenes in a radio show. You know, who are the people behind the performance? Well, let's see. First, I must give credit to my writers. John Tackerberry, Milt Josephsberg, George Balzer, and Sam Penn. I think they're four of the smartest, cleverest, funniest and most intelligent writers in the business. Well, Jack, it's very nice of you to say that about your boys. They wrote the line. He had to say it. <laughs> no. But, Ed, you can take my word for it. They're very clever. Oh, I know that, Jack, and I've heard a lot about them. Jack, isn't it true that Sam Perrin and George Balls are about the Broadway show Are You With It? Yes, yes, they did that with my permission. Mm -hmm. And didn't John Tackerberry write that song, Pickle in the Middle? Yes, yes, he did that with my permission. And isn't your other writer, Mill Josephberg, expecting a baby soon? Yes, he... Yes, yes, he is. <laughs> if Hilda is listening, we hope she feels all right. Well, now, Jack, who are some of the other people who are important to your program? Well, there's my special assignment man, Hilliard Marks, producer Bob Ballin, musical director Malin Merrick, secretary Jane Tucker and Bert Scott, and last but not least, Herman McShaughnessy. Herman McShaughnessy? What does he do? He explains Dick Tracy to Phil Harris. Oh. <laughs> now, on the acting... On the acting side of the ledger, we have Mel Blank, who plays a part of my French violin teacher, also my parent. Artie Auerbach, the hot dog salesman. Sarah Berner and B. Benadera, who played the telephone operators. Dick Lane, who plays the part of Steve Bradley, my press agent. Janine Roos, who played Phil Harris's little daughter. Frank Nelson, who always pops up on the show, looks at me and says, Yes? And Joe Kearns, the keeper of my vault. Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman, who really own this program, but let me guest star on it during the weeks they're off. <laughs> My NBC engineers, George Foster and Charlie Buck. My sound men, Floyd Caton and Par Parker Cornell. And finally, Wilbur Klingenfeel. Wilbur Klingenfeel? He explains Dick Tracy to Herman McShaughnessy. <laughs> well, well, I guess that takes care of them all. Well, unless you want to mention the janitor who sweeps up after the show. <laughs> no, no, he left me and is now writing for Fred Allen. <laughs> Uh, now, Ed, how oh, about... Mr. Sullivan, would you mind putting something in your column for me? Why, not at all, Dennis. I'll be glad to. What's the occasion? My mother had a baby. <laughs> well, that is news. When? 22 years ago. <laughs> Dennis. What's his name? Oh, stop it. <laughs> now, Ed... I don't want to appear anxious, but how about this award you're going to give me? Huh? Huh? Jack, let go of my lapel. Oh, oh, pardon me. I, I, no, I forgot myself. Uh, what kind of an award is it, Ed? Well, it's called the Ed Sullivan Award for Modern Screen Magazine, Mary, and it's being given to Jack Benny because of his outstanding radio programs during the past season. Oh, Ed, that's such a thrill, really. I'm overwhelmed. I, I feel faint. Quick, Bill, let him smell your tie. <laughs> And so, Jack, on behalf of Modern Screen Magazine, it gives me great pleasure to award you this gold plaque. Gee, thanks. Jack, 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 stop fighting it. It's gold. Oh, but, Ed, this is a, a Modern Screen Award, and I haven't made a picture in two years. That had something to do with it, too. Oh, oh, I see. You know, Mary, it's really a great thrill for me to give this award to Jack. 
because he made his very first radio appearance on my program 15 years ago. That's right, Mary. And uh, who sponsored that program? Well, let's see, Geraldine Hair Tonic. <laughs> Jack made his debut on a hair tonic program? On a hair tonic program? On a hair tonic program? What an opening for an actor who ain't worried about options. <laughs> Bill, one more word out of you. I'll light a match to your tie and blow you out of here. <laughs> now, quiet. Well, I guess I'd better run along, Jack. Uh, how about another game of golf tomorrow? Certainly, Ed, if you're not afraid that I'll beat you again like I did yesterday. Wait a minute. Say, Ed, did Jack really beat you at golf? Why do you think I had to give him this award? <laughs> oh, for goodness sake, Ed. It was our agreement that you weren't supposed to mention that. Now you've spilled the beans. Well, goodbye, Ed, and thanks very, very much. You're welcome, Jack, and so long. What are you laughing at? Nothing, Jack. But if you could get Joan Crawford into a game of golf, maybe you'd win an Oscar. Mary. Mary, don't be so... Say, I wonder if Joan does play golf. <laughs> at the same time. Again, I want to thank everybody associated with this program and also all of my listeners, even those of you who can't stand Jack Benny.